Okay, so uh, it being on or about 6.30, um, bring this uh, regular meeting of the Eastern Conservation Commission uh, to order April 20th, 2021. Um, just to, some bookkeeping here. Um, in keeping with the ongoing emergency order from Governor Baker to limit gatherings, maximize social distancing, and other legislation passed to address remote board meetings, during the emergency declaration, this meeting will be conducted over Zoom. Attendance by the board and commission members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. We'll take a roll call in a moment to establish quorum. This meeting will be broadcast um, uh, and recorded by ECAT um, and attendees um, can obviously access the meeting through either the Zoom link or the phone in uh, dial and you'll be given an opportunity to uh, uh, contribute if you desire. Um, please note, um, as I said, this meeting is re being recorded, both audio and video. Um, applicants will be given the opportunity, uh, the ability to assume remote control of their hearings if they desire, or else uh, um, either myself or, or the agent can uh, bring up uh, plans if necessary. Um, please note that on April 6, 2020, the commission delegated signature authority to Andrea Langhauser, environmental planner, assistant planning director for decisions issued during the duration of the emergency. Um, a couple of other um, notes. Um, one is that um, if after 90 minutes, uh, I'll take a bit of a pause to see uh, where we stand in the meeting um, to see uh, if we need a, a break or not. Um, if we're close to finishing, we might just plow through. But if we're half an hour or more away from finishing, we will probably take a short uh, five minute break uh, uh, at that time. Um, also note that um, the hearings are um, limited to 15 minutes um, um, for the um, applicants and the, the, the commission. Um, it is, will be then be my decision after 15 minutes to determine whether or not we need additional time um, to pr continue proceeding or we've heard enough at that point. I, I would just ask in order to maintain to that 15 minutes uh, that um, both uh, the applicants and <coughs> the uh, and the um, commission uh, be concise and focused in their comments and uh, pry, uh, try and stay away from any um, unnecessary extraneous information. So it's simply just to keep the meeting moving um, and uh, these can be pretty fatiguing to be on these uh, um, for several hours. So um, that's all. Uh, and obviously, if we need more time on a hearing, we, we will do so, but I, I want to do that at my discretion. Thank you, Carl Roy. Okay. So uh, first up, um, and I probably forgot something from that, that long explanation that I emailed you, Andrea, but I didn't have time to bring it up. So. Um, um, 365 Main Street, uh, this is a request for determination of applicability uh, for a proposed patio expansion, shed installation, and retaining wall. And I don't see the applicant. I promoted him to panelist. Oh, okay. There he is. Good. I, I missed him between the two screens. We're good. So, uh, Mr. White, I don't know uh, if you want to... Um, you want me to put up some plans or if you want to and then you can just give us some narrative about what's going on at the at the um, at your site so you need to take yourself off mute hi do you hear me we do all right i, I don't see my own picture so i'm kind of lost here but anyway um you can did you, you want to start your video? You, you probably should be able to start your video now that you're a panel. My first Zoom meeting ever, so. Okay. <laughs> on, the, on the lower left side, if you're on a, 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 a device. Yeah, under, I found it. Okay, very good. I Excellent. probably should have left it off. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> we oh, the beach comber, we're, we're good. We're good. You're wearing a comber t-shirt, so we're, we're good. <laughs> uh, well, basically, I want to put a shed in my backyard. Uh, I have a existing stone patio back there that I just want to do like a semicircle just to give us enough room to get around the table I have up there. Probably no more than five feet uh, to the farthest point out. And again, in a semicircle back to the square, which you can see how I drew out there on the right. Right. 
So um, I'm just gonna, so this is, I'm just gonna use the other one just to, so that the, the, um, the rest of the commission can see the full uh, scope of the land, uh, the, the, of the lot. And yeah. um, so this is an as built from a uh, septic system, um, which we're working off of right now, so. Yes, yeah, I think I submitted that actually, I'm not sure. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> as a point of reference, so this is, uh, this is Main Street, um, a couple uh, houses up is actually the town line, or actually it's probably up about a quarter mile. Yeah. Um, and to the left here would be uh, Route 138 and Hilliers. So uh, just to orient ourselves here, there's a, a wetland line that um, borders um, along uh, this um, intermittent stream. Um, and as well um, around the rear as well. There is another um, stream, uh, intermittent stream that runs into this stream here. I don't, I don't see it marked on this particular um, um, uh, drawing. Oh, it's, it's the back, that one on the back runs into that one and then goes into the woods off into Stone Hill property. Correct, so I'm just sort of orienting everybody. This is the woods line here. This intermittent stream is actually probably about five or eight feet off of that wood line. So just to orient everybody. So go back to, let's go back to the, the original drawing here. So, so this dimension here, we're talking about just extending this no more than five feet. Yes, exactly. I just want to put that semicircle there because I have a, like a six position table on the patio and you literally have to walk sideways to get around it. Right. So I just want to extend it enough because, you know, the, the new normal is to hang out outside and yeah. just want a little more room. Um, how large a shed are we talking about here? Uh, <laughs> my hope would be a 10 by 20, uh, but it's really all about financial resources. And on that note, I've heard that Prices of lumber and stuff has shot way up since COVID. So I really want to put a 10 by 20 there. But last year, they were like $10,000 to have one installed. And if it's like 13 grand this year, I might hold off until see if it goes down cost wise next year. My understanding that is if something's approved, that it's good for three years. Is that correct or incorrect? That's right. The permit would be good for three years. Okay. Yeah. I mean, all this is my, this is my dream list, what you're looking at. Can right. I financially afford to do it? I hope so. But what I really want to do is to extend that patio. And again, you know, I'm kind of, I'm at this point, I'm retired. I'm kind of have limited resources and I've been saving for a long time to do this. And so the shed thing's kind of bumming me out because I know that the price of all the lumber went up. So I, again, I hope to have a 10 by 20 shed there. Uh, I want to extend that patio. And then out front when they did the septic, they just did a horrible job. Like if you look at my house from the street, the left side of the house, you see a foot and a half of foundation and the right side, you see six inches. <laughs> it's looks horrible. And I just want to put that small retaining wall out there and fill that in. And you can see where the X's are to level that out. And then on headed toward the 138 side, you can see where it says 1500 gallon septic tank that slopes down to the backyard. But at the time there was a very large overgrown shrub there, like literally 15 feet out. And they just filled up to it. So when I cut the shrub down to normal size, it's just a big hollow there, which probably take a couple of three yards of uh, gravel or loom to, to fill that. And just to even it out because it's, it's just tough to drive on my uh, with my lawnmower and just looks ugly. So, um, so this is my, my own question, my, my question here, I think um, on the shed, what kind of, um, footings are we talking about for the shed? Are we just talking about, um, you know, cement blocks on the ground? That I that was my initial thing. Someone told me I should do uh, sauna tubes, but I don't know what the deal is. Like, my understanding is you don't have to have a permit for a 10 by 20. 
Um, but I don't know if that means as long as it's just on blocks or. So I think so. Let, let's talk about a little bit about what um, what we're trying to accomplish here from a conservation commission standpoint. So okay. I, I believe that there's a, a maximum square footage uh, or that, that you can go up. A, you can go up to and not have to get a, a building permit for it. I don't know what that is. I it's ten by it, twenty, according to the board of health. Okay, so I, I think yeah. it is two hundred square feet. So yeah, it is. Um, so so I think I think that that's correct. But from our standpoint, we want to. So what you have before us is is a request to determine whether or not the the work that you're proposing to do is going to have an impact on the wetland resources, right? Um, and the way it's being designed. So I, I would say that um, so so from our standpoint, the less disturbance that you're going to propose, right, the, the better off we have in in addressing that to decrease the amount of impact that you might have right. on the wetland resources. So my initial plan was to just put down washed stone, like a, a you know few inches of washed stone, and then the, to my knowledge, I haven't contacted a an actual shed company yet right. I want to go through this first and I think once you put the stone down they have a way to level it with the block correct um, yeah I, I I'd say that that my own experience with with sheds is that most of the time you're not actually putting it on any sort of foundation um, yeah it, 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 it does not mind sitting on blocks on your lawn <laughs> that's what I was thinking too and so yeah. like you know of course everybody knows everyone who you know knows something so right. they all have to give you their input and their input is oh you gotta put it on sauna tubes and i'm like well do you <laughs> right, but right. That, that's initially that's my plan as far as the the patio it's not like there's going to be heavy equipment running around out there it's probably going to be some guy potentially me with a shovel digging out that little semi-circle so they could just start putting block down uh, stone and stuff in there you know what i mean yeah, so so I think that that part part of this is if we if we approve it that 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 will be some of the conditions that would have to be um, right um, put in place that, that we're talking about um, you know hand uh, you know hand um, excavation only right right um, I, I think that if you went to start digging holes to put sono tubes in I'd say you yeah, now yeah. you've got to put in erosion controls right, and all right, sorts right. of other things. Which I think that you're trying to avoid. Oh yeah. Um, because if if that happens, I think we probably have to go to an N1, which is a notice of intent. Yeah. So um, so from from my standpoint, to sort of give you that feedback, um, and so um, I think that the only other thing that you know, and, and you and I met briefly on on uh, Saturday or Sunday. I don't remember. Oh, was that? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't recognize you. I, I had a mask on. Yes. <laughs> Uh, on Saturday, um, and so I, I guess that from my standpoint, um, that I understood that, that wanting to to level out um, some of the um, the grading that's a little poor. It's um, I, I noticed it on the the slope on the the, right. the side yeah. of the house as well yeah. as a couple a couple of spots on the front of the house. The the one thing I really didn't understand, and I understand a little bit of your explanation. I'm just not quite sure that. Um, it meets the sort of level of it, you really have to do it type of thing. And that's putting in that retaining wall. Because if you put in that retaining wall, now we're talking about bringing in a whole lot more dirt than just leveling out um, areas of lawn. Um, and, and that's a little bit more concerning to me that, that I don't know what the cubic, cubic yardage there would be. Well, not... the distance, I mean, well, I guess you would hear you, sorry, but. It's I, I, literally I, raising the ground about a foot because, again, if you look at the left side of the house from the left side of the steps, it's you see like a foot and a half of uh, concrete uh, foundation. And if you look at the right, it's probably six inches. So it's yeah. literally just putting that there to retain it and just then grade it off out into the yard. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's it's probably four yards of loom, uh, excuse me, of gravel, and then probably two yards, three yards of loom just to level it out. I know, I and, and what I'm trying to suggest to you, though, is that once we start talking about those type of things, now we're talking about um, um, 
erosion controls and um and in what way from the sense that once you start putting down loom and if, if it and it hasn't revegetated now we've got to protect that 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 loom from going somewhere else other than where you put it okay so that that's that's what i mean so you know it oh. it, it isn't it isn't simply from the sense because if if the if it rains hard overnight and that loom washes away into the wetlands, now you've had an impact on the wetlands, which we we would not allow. And if if this came if this project came before us with that kind of of disturbance happening on the property, we would insist that you put erosion control in, maybe at the edge of the driveway or something along those lines. And what exactly is that? Um, it would be a a, a you know, a probably an eight inch silt sock that you're, you know, um, that you're putting down and, you know, either, you know, compost filled or, or, or yeah. hay filled that would, you know, control the, the, the dirt from going anywhere. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know how I can make the house look more level without putting that into there, honestly. Well, <laughs> you know, the, the, the the issue, you know, um, and, and I, I can't say because I don't know what it looked like before the septic system was done, and it, it could have been addressed at the septic system. I'm a little. Well, bit that's hesitant. the problem. Is I'm they a little did bit such hesitant. A poor job. So, so hang on just one second. So when I'm, I, I'm when I'm trying to speak, I would appreciate for me to be able to at least okay. I'm continue sorry. my my sentence to the end so that then you can respond to it. So so my concern is this is not a notice of intent where you're going through an entire permit process. This is a request for determination of applicability, which means we have to find it to be so so minor enough that we don't believe that this the the activity that you're going to propose is has a, any impact on the wetland resources. Okay, so okay. and sometimes we can condition it in such a way that we feel like we can protect the, the wetland resources if it's a minor change. I think when you're talking about doing the kind of landscape grading out front with that that stream that's off to the side that I, I can't say that given the, the plan that you put before us, that that's 100 percent you know possible to do it that way. So my concern and so if, if you're talking about you know, you're going to use uh, hand tools to, to prepare the um, uh, the area for the the um, patio and it's yeah. to, to be no more than five feet. And right. that you have a location not to exceed the 200 square foot for the shed, because that's a yeah. fairly flat property, so a yeah. flat portion of land. So I'm not concerned about you having to put a whole lot of material there to make it level. Correct. I think those two things, are, and some of the minor um, grading changes that you want to do around the the, um, the the septic system that had to be put in um, and yeah. fix that, I I could see all that happening. The one I'm having a challenge with is the 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 um the amount of change you want to do in the, in the land i just want to put i'm going to put a picture up of the front of your house so people can see okay. the, the changes that, that you're gonna that you're okay. talking about okay yeah Can you see it now or no? no. Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. So the retaining wall is over here where the we're talking about where the, the real card is. is. Yeah. So th that's the, the difference in the in the grade. So I just want to give perspective there. Do you have a straight shot right from standing at the street? No. No. These are just my reference shots when I'm out there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so to see the other, uh, so, um, so Andrew, can, can you give us some perspective on the the the, um, the staff report and what might be uh, some of your, you know, what, some of the things we need to look at here? So, sure, um, Rory, you picked up a lot of it, but the. Um, as with all of the new hearings, the abutters 
uh, proof of a butter notification was uploaded. Um, on that photograph that um, Rory just showed, if you look toward the side of the uh, other side of the driveway, you'll see that the, the according to the house uh, assessor's records, the house was constructed in 1954, and the wetland is in many ways a mowed lawn and has been for most of the years I've been living here in Easton. I've been working here in Easton. Um, it is, um, we don't have a natural buffer here um, and it hasn't the whole time Mr. White lived here. Um, in it, the whole, he's just maintaining the property the way he found it. Um, I did, I did ask that he come forward with his, what some people would be considering uh, regular landscaping just so that he could hear from you regarding um, you know, the concern of, of having a house on the top of a, of, of a, a small grade going both um, to the side, to the, to the, um, cult, to the uh, stream coming off of Main Street. There is a, a extensive wetland across the street. So um, uh, I would just say that I had anticipated that uh, an eight inch erosion control barrier would be expected to do this work at the at the driveway. Okay. If, if um, I can say something, can I can I speak? Uh, Hello? Yeah. I was uh, just uh, considering it, yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, a lot of that wetland area to that well, if you're facing the house to the left, a lot of it is runoff from the street. When they redid the street at what whatever point that's been pouring into my yard. I finally put up a barrier that prevented a lot of that, and it's a lot drier now than it's ever been the, since I've lived here. The, the whole, all the water runs all the way from Hilliards. It comes down the side of the side of the street and pours right into my yard. And then I just blocked it right there. And when you go past my house, where that you know potential intermittent stream is, there's, there's three, uh, four concrete uh, barriers to prevent someone from going into the gully there. Well, now it's just running in past there. So most of that wetland is literally runoff from the street coming into my yard. At one point I had the town- uh, the So, so I, I just I just wanna be clear that, that that stream is coming from somewhere else. So because because it's probably coming from the wetland across the street. No, and that's it, blocked. They blocked that uh, area. They blocked Mr. that. Mr. White, it, it was, uh, it's four feet wide, a foot deep. Um, it was running on, on Saturday when I was there. That is not coming from runoff from the street. It, it could very well, uh, Mr. White, it could very well be uh, high groundwater this time uh, of year, yeah. especially so, with so all the storms we've had. So here, here's, part, here's part of the challenge that you present to us, and, and, and you may have noted it or not, but the, the fact that you have changed the drainage pattern here um, without asking for permission to do so is a problem. Oh. I just, Mr. White, it, it is a problem. I, I'm just saying that, that and you may not understand because it's been that way for your entire time and you're trying to improve the process. The problem is the wetlands are the wetlands and you can't be the one to singularly decide what's better for the wetlands or not. Well, at one point, as I said, the town came out because I told them that the, the water was pouring off the street into my property and they filled that area. But because the postal person drives down the side of the road and digs that area out. It all eroded away. So I just put a little batch of concrete back so it couldn't do that again. So I so I'm just so recorrected what the town did a few years back after the, my the, request. The town doing the town doing road work is different than than, than you doing. It wasn't so. it wasn't road work. It was a request because I called the DPW because the water was pouring from the street into my property, and they came out and filled that area. You so, can see this you, stone there. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one comment, and then I'm gonna recognize other commission members to, to make some comments here because we've we've gone beyond our 15 minutes, um, and uh, I really want to tighten this up because I, I think I see where this is going. Well, the, my last comment here is is that um, bringing this before us. 
you know, gives us an opportunity to, to make sure that the wetland resources are being protected. Um, I, I think that the stream across the back of the property that's mowed on both sides of the stream, right up to the stream, um, is um, it, it, that needs to change. Um, I, I think that, that, to be quite honest, that, that you should be allowing for at least a five foot buffer off of that, that stream from uh, between you and the house um, and, and allow it to renaturalize. Um, the fact that it's being mowed is detrimental to that wetland resource um, and, um, and, and certainly um, not at all uh, beneficial to, to the situation. And it's, it's probably making it wetter back there than it needs to be because you don't have any vegetation that is able to absorb any of the water. So um, I think that's one of my, my concerns here. And, and to be quite honest, you know, we, we could insist that, that you put up a, um, um, a, um, um, some sort of barrier to, to notify that that's a no disturb zone. I mean, no disturb zone is, is 50 feet from uh, any wetland resource. So uh, understand that that's you know, where we stand on this. At least that's where I stand on it. So, I, and I know you probably have some comments on it, but I, I want to recognize the other commission members and we come back to you. Anybody have any comments? The only comment I have, Roy, you was talking about the year the, uh, I think, what did you say it was a, a big uh, shrub or tree you cut down? And it left a uh, big depression or something to that effect. It it shows yeah. here on this plan, uh, Charlie. Oh yeah, to the on the side of the house, it was just an overgrown shrub. The person I bought the house from was uh, very old, and he stopped maintaining the property, so it just grew out. And when they filled it in, it was literally grown <laughs> fifteen feet up the side of my house. So I trimmed them down, and if you see the house now, you can see that they're much smaller shrubs, and it's just. So what you're seeing, the area where that shrub came down, you know, it, it, because of the depression, you're having a problem mowing it. Yes, I mean, it's difficult to because of just the, you know, the elevation and the awkwardness of it. Well, that wouldn't have to come up to many, many houses on one side because of the topography of the lot. You'll find one side of the foundation could have sometimes two feet and the other side could have six inches. Yeah. It's the nature of the beast, uh, depending on the topography of the lot. But the area you're talking about wouldn't take very much fill at all just to make it mobile following the existing contour around where that depression is. Correct, correct. And maintain the existing topography. Yes, exactly. Carol, anything? Sure. Um, Rory, I, uh, I agree with all of your points and concerns, and I am ready to vote on this. Um, so, um, we got a lot of, we, go ahead. Can I offer, um, not that it's our business to design projects, but I know that you're having a hard time with the retaining wall and um, what Charlie is describing is, um, you know, this is a rather common occurrence. Instead of a retaining wall, it could be addressed with foundation plantings. Uh, I, well, I thought he was talking about the opposite side of the house, honestly. And, yes, but I took the same point <laughs> and it was, it is minor over where the shrub was taken out, right. um, but it's not minor over where the, um, over by the driveway. And so I just wanted to see how the commission felt or the applicant felt. I, I, I think it, I think that's a, a very reasonable alternative, you know, and um, it may not be what the, the applicant envisioned when he first came before us. I, here's, here's what I'm struggling with. I think we've actually got a lot of work to do here to make this a negative request for determination of applicability. I, I don't think there's enough information in front of us I don't think that there's, um, I, I don't think that there's, um, that the, the applicant has an adequate um, appreciation for um, what might need to be done to protect the wetland resources. Um, and I, I'm, as much as I try and get these um, um, determination of applicabilities to come before us, and, and condition them in such a way that the applicant can 
uh, proceed with the work. I, I'm challenged on this one because I think we would have to spend another 10 or 15 minutes on this um, in order to get there. Be because just, and it's, I think it's just a matter of, of, of he, he's got well in resources that are potentially impacted here. Um, I suggest a continuance, Rory, to get some more facts together. And when he says two yards, four yards, four yards is, is a so I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to tell you if if the applicant sticks with with wanting to to even out the foundation, I am absolutely 100 percent going to vote a positive term, term, termination of applicability. So he he can go that way, and if well, he's going to go I that ask? way, he's going to have to go to an NOI. Right. Um, and, and so. Um, if he wants to do that, as opposed to the other thing, I, I don't. There's, I, I almost, I can tell you right now that I, I would not give a negative determination of applicability on that particular change. If you wanted to remove that from the plan and have that not be part of the 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 change, then we have a, a different thing to discuss. Um, it still has some issues, and I would I would insist on conditions protecting that stream across the back. Um, you may even we may even consider you know um, insisting on um, um, permanent markers and whether that permanent marker is a post and rail fence um, that um, it, you know puts a barrier there to to mark off that that is not to be disturbed. Um, so that that's what I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm happy to hear from something else uh, from the commission. So. I'm. I don't have too much to say other than I'm in agree. I'm in agreement with Rory. I am also in agreement. Um, and you know, if the applicant would like to to continue, I mean, if the commission would vote to continue, one thing that I would like to see the applicant do, uh, as far as the location of the shed, make it pretty accurate. You know, the distance from the house. Uh, I think. I think there was at the bottom of the screenshot. Um, some distance from the this 75 feet from something or other right at the very bottom to the wetland right yes from the, like like, to the plan yeah i'd like to see that location specified from at least two different points so so i, I think that that um mr white i think that you have um i i think that the commission is willing to give you an option here um, and, and that is the, the first option is that most likely we would uh, vote to um, uh, as a as a positive determination of applicability, which means that you would then need to file a notice of intent for these this work. What does that mean, though? I don't know what it means. So does a notice of intent is a, a much bigger permit process um, where we would have to have a, a much more detailed plan about what you were doing, and you'd have to have uh, sufficient um, um, uh, protections, um, erosion controls, and everything else that were, were required here. You'd have to potentially, uh, and, you know, uh, have the wetlands flagged. Um, um, to uh, you have to have a wetland scientist come out and flag your wetland, so we knew exactly yeah. where the wetland I, lines I, were. I, I want to try to avoid that at all costs. Again, I'm on limited resources. These, this I, is my I, dream in my home, and I just want to try to live my dream at my home. And and, 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 and to be quite honest, we want to get you there. And I think that the the message that you've been that we've been trying to convey to you tonight is that what's been presented to us is really pushing the boundaries of our. Um, ability to approve this project as designed. And, and, and when I say approve it, I mean, we would have to issue a, a negative determination of applicability, which means that we believe that the, this project will have no impact on the wetland resources. And, and I don't think that the way it's designed um, right now is, is something that we would be prepared to do that. I think it's lacking in some detail. I think that there's some other wetland considerations that are going on here with the stream going across the back that's getting mowed on both sides. Um, I, I think that the, the grading out front, while you, it may be something that, that you would prefer, I think that the wetland considerations probably overrule that. Um, um, so well, if we scratch that, does so, that make So any yes, so, so what I would suggest, I mean, th this, is, this is my suggestion to you, and, I, and it, it might be the first time I've ever continued an RDA, um, but 
um, this is what I would suggest to you is that that um, that you give us some very specific dimensions. I, I'd like to see it on the the, the plan uh, that you present to us on dimensions on the extension of the patio so that we know it's written on the plan and we can yeah. agree to that. The, 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 a more precise location of the shed. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I think that, that um, the precise location of the, um, the grading that you want to change and give me some approximation of the depth which you think the corrections were needed. The ones I saw were probably no greater than six inches um, in any one place. So I, I really wasn't going to be all that disturbed by doing that. Um, where were, where were you seeing that? Where do you want to do the grading changes? I, I, I'm not. So, so, so not, I guess, I guess you're, you're making my point for me. Okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you can put stakes out in the yard where you want to make the grading changes. Okay. Precisely. Uh, Mr. White, uh, you have, you have the option for us to not continue this. No, 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 no. I'm trying to write down this stuff so I know what I'm doing. When I can would you, meet you would you... on the site tomorrow, Mr. White. Tomorrow? Yeah, a Andrea is offering to be out on the site with you tomorrow. To that would be great. Communi communicate to you what, what the, the board is looking for. All right. What time? Um, I'm still putting my calendar together. Um, I, have to, I have to schedule a couple of meetings. It'll be some time between. Why don't we do, why don't we do it at 9? Okay. Um, before I go into town hall. So, and, and I think that Mr. Mr. White, you, 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 we're going to have to address that stream across the back. So you should think about how you, how you want to proceed with that as well, because otherwise we'll just make it a condition and that'll be it. Okay. Okay. So I, I, uh, any public comment for 365 main street, raise your hand or put it in the chat. Okay, so seeing none, um, I'm gonna make a motion to continue 365 Main Street to our next meeting on May 3rd. Any little second. Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Lundine aye. Very low aye. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Yep. Okay, um, next up is, uh, Nine Hobart Way, which um, I understand uh, we have asked, we've had a request to continue this. Came in today to continue okay. to May 24th. Having, having read the staff report, they're going to delineate the additional wetlands. Okay. Um, uh, make a motion to, to continue Nine Hobart Way to May 24th. Lundin second. Uh, Caulfield's aye. Lundin aye. Melo aye. Okay, continued. We're 0 for 2 tonight, guys. We have not closed the hearing yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10, 10 Barron Road, lot three. Bringing Eric Diaz up. This is a notice of intent to complete construction of a single family home. At Barron Estates. At Barron Estates, right? This is a subdivision. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, why? Good. No worries. I'm going to be the first one you close tonight. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, before he speaks, I'm going to let you know that I revised my site plan, <laughs> my staff report this oh my. afternoon. It's been posted. But um, I don't know that it got around. Okay. He responded to my comments. I responded to his. Okay. We've had a good uh, a good back and forth going on, but I think we're in pretty good shape on this one. Okay, so uh, you have control of the screen. If you want to bring up what you want, tell us what's going on. Excellent. Yeah, let me share my screen, and I'll walk you through this one. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So this is the proposed. Can everybody see this? I'll zoom in on the plan view here. 
So this is the proposed notice of intent plan. Um, this is lot three Barron Estates, which is 10 Barron Drive located in the Barron Estates subdivision. Uh, it's a it's a close to, I want to say, roughly 30 lot subdivision, very um, off of Mill Street. I know the commission's familiar with it. Um, the site is located within Natural Heritage Habitat. Uh, I believe it is for the for a salamander and a turtle, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the proposal, very simple. We're proposing just a single family house um, in a line with what was approved on the um, order of conditions for the subdivision, although the house layout is a little bit different than what was on that subdivision order of conditions. Um, we, most of the, pro the project is outside of the 50 foot buffer zone. There's a little bit right here where my cursor is that's inside the 50 foot buffer zone. But the interesting thing about this project is this. I'm gonna bring up another plan real quick. Because this site is in habitat, when it was approved, it was approved with this conservation restriction plan. Okay, so you can see the area that's hatched all through here over lots five, four. This is lot three, two, and one. This is all a conservation restriction area. There is uh, some uh, salamander crossings under Barron Drive, and it leads to this much, much larger conservation restriction area over here. So, in a sense, the disturbances on this lot have been pre-mitigated. They were mitigated for during the subdivision approval of this process. You can see right here, there is the boundary of the conservation restriction. There's an active conservation management plan. Um, that boundary has been staked in the field. There is a silt fence right along that line. Um, there is signage along that line indicating no disturbance past this point. We're not proposing to change that line whatsoever. We're just proposing to work right up to that line. So if I go back to my other plan, you'll see here where we're working inside the 50 foot buffer zone, you can see this line with the little circles on it. That is the current um, conservation restriction boundary that's on the site. So that boundary is within a little bit of the 50 foot buffer zone. You can see that there's an isolated land subject to flooding right here. I should have led with this. Um, this is local because it's isolated land subject to flooding. Um, it does not have a buffer zone under DEP's requirements. Um, and we're 40 feet off of that, 40.6 feet off of that. So we're working only within the areas that have been predetermined that we're allowed to work within under the conservation restriction. Um, there was some back and forth between Andrea and myself. Um, we added a few things to the plans to satisfy some of her um, requests. One of those things is rooftop infiltration, which we put in the front yard here. Um, Andrea did ask us for a more permanent or some kind of a beefed up um, boundary, so to speak. Um, Andrea actually suggested a post and rail fence. My client would prefer not to do a post and rail fence. Um, but he has proposed to install several more of the signs um, that indicate no, absolutely no work beyond this point. Uh, in fact, we have a note that we're proposing to copy that signage and put it every 25 feet along this boundary. Uh, we have included the commission sustainable lawn guidance to be utilized in perpetuity. Um, and we've added a note in response to Andrea's comments, uh, note number 21, that we should maintain all erosion controls in place until the disturbed areas have been stabilized. So that's the final points of it. I'm sure I, there's probably something that I glossed over, but I'll be glad to take any questions that you have. So what the, uh, you, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Andrea. Yeah, Andrea, can you, can you give us uh, your, your, uh, your summary of the staff report, please? Very quickly, the um, Barron Drive is, is actually one of the few sites where you have the Natural Heritage having already issued the uh, comprehensive management plan, so they look, they really did look at everything. Your order of conditions for the subdivision picks up all conditions of the uh, Natural Heritage approval and make and embeds it into. So the flexibility of where to put the CR uh, boundary was determined by natural heritage and accepted by the former commission. That conservation restriction has been recorded, is gift 
is in being held by the Conservation Commission and is over 23 acres. Um, this isolated land subject to flooding is a state resource, but the buffer zone is only in the local bylaw. So this is one case where you will only be issuing a permit for your work. He did pick up, um, he also acknowledged um, in his supplemental information that there's a declaration of restrictions which has been deeded, uh, which has been attached to the, every one of the deeds of this subdivision in which the responsibility to maintain the integrity of that Conservation Commission boundary is in perpetuity as, as a, a, a rather large document. Um, as well as maintaining and monitoring the um, wildlife. So I do believe um, that I do believe that it, the predictability needed for subdivision has established where the limit of work would be. And um, what Eric has put together are the local controls on the lot when you're working this close to a wetland. That's okay. my take. Great. So the um the one question I had, Eric, you, you mentioned that um that this the the house layout is slightly different than what was um on the original subdivision plan. Is, well, is there is there a change in square footage? I can actually pull up the the uh, originally approved subdivision plan. And, and what it, what you'll see, and I'll zoom in. I think we lose a little bit of resolution when I do. But you can see the house that's here is very much just a placeholder square house, no dimensions given, anything like that. It shows a driveway coming in and some rough grades coming into it. But these were clearly meant to be kind of placeholders. Yep. There uh, it is. With no real dimension given or anything like that. So as with all of these lots in this subdivision, they come to us now that they've been approved on a case by case and the homeowners select their particular um, footprint that they want. So I mean that that's relatively in the same location that you, that that you're proposing it to. It is, yeah. It, it's it's very similar. It, you can see kind of the apex of the curve here, and it's yeah, it's yeah. curve. Um, and then if we go back to my other plan, it's off centered from the curve a little bit. Um, but the, and the reason for that is that we needed to site the septic system somewhere, which is right here outside right. of the foot buffer zone. Right. Subdivision plans didn't account for where the septic systems would go. Yep. So, we had to say so this. there is an increase in impervious. That's why it's a notice of intent and not a minor modification. Plus the fact that the plus the fact that the original order, ex, the construction permit period, has already expired. But having it be more impervious just means it's something that requires a notice of intent. Okay, um, I have uh, uh, no questions. Um, anybody have anybody have any comments, questions? Carol, I do. Thank you. That's my dog. Um, um, according to the staff report, this is in the Canoe River ACEC. Do we not need waivers for this? Or waiver you know, requests? They, uh, there is a waiver request, and he addressed the waiver request uh, by saying, um, and this is in the staff report, there's no alternatives presented because the lot lines and the limit of work were already established in the subdivision order, combined order permit. That um, the way he avoided, minimized, and mitigated was already the erosion controls, but then adding sustainable lawn practices, recharging roof runoff, and a more visible permanent marker, which he's made as a new note on the revised plan. Um, and the Conservation Commission, in terms of public interest, we hold a 23 acre um, conservation restriction on the land that was deemed most significant to natural heritage. And the boundaries are so darn clear. Those signs in the backyard, I'm yeah. impressed that your applicant wants to put more of those up. Yeah, they're actually, um, I wish they all looked like that. Those things are hard to miss. 
They're certainly kind. They're certainly in your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think the other thing that that I, I consider in this, and Carol, I'll come right back to you in a second, but um, is that the original intent and approval by the uh, Conservation Commission, uh, prior Conservation Commission. I, I was not on on the commission at that time. It was prior to my time. And, um, so I, I mean, I, I I do respect that that approval, and I don't think that the conditions on the site have changed dramatically to uh, alter um, that condition. I think that the the conservation restriction on the 23 plus acres is significant um, and as well as the the um, the natural heritage uh, you know conservation management plan that's been in place uh, I think addresses the uh, um, the the um, wildlife habitat uh, issue as well so Carol anything else sure. uh, thank you Andrea for about uh, I, I was looking at, at your staff report but didn't see where you addressed the waiver um, Another comment would be about the, the sustainable lawn care practices. Um, be, because of being in an ACEC, um, I would like to see added to, to the condition something that says uh, no use of pesticides or herbicides or fungicides or herbicides or anything with a pesticide license um, whatsoever. Andrea, is, is that... Uh, an is that contained in any of the conditions on the rest of the property? No. The rest of the development? Uh, wait a second. Yes, there is a perpetual, the perpetual conditions of the original. No road salts, no dumping, and no, there's no, um, the, the perpetual conditions were the, the conservation management plan, which doesn't address uh, lawn care. No road salts no dumping in wetland and maintenance of the stormwater management. So the sustainable lawn practices were meant to pick that up, but doesn't in its current form, doesn't address a ban on um, herbicide application, herbicide pesticide. Okay. We have in our, um, in our town bylaws, I think the state too, but yeah, we're not yeah. going there. I, yeah. I, I just, I don't, we can't, we can't repeat the same stuff over and over again. So I, not, either we'll, we'll approve it. Or, part of the notice of intent. We'll, we'll, we'll either approve it or we don't have to approve it. We don't have to have the same conversation that we had at the last meeting. So I, I would prefer not to have the same conversation that we had at the last meeting. Okay, that's fair. It's a, um, at some point, I hope we have that conversation. And we can do that if we start to have these meetings last less than two hours. Charlie, anything? Um, no, the only thing I'm gonna say, I'm just uh, very, very briefly on the herbicides, pesticides, you move one lot over, it's not under our jurisdiction. You're doing what they want. Not that I advocate it, but I mean, it's almost like, um, you're not, you're not going to totally control it. No, and, and so I, as, a, as a point of, of clarification, and I literally am going to spend 30 seconds on this. I, I, I do not um, fundamentally disagree with, with you, Carol, on this issue. Um, I, I just, I need to find a way to um, have an easy way to apply it. Right. Okay, that, that's, that's my, I don't want to be handling this one-on-one, -on -one and, and yes, do we want to sit here and talk about a, a sustainable lawn practice that includes those uh, those conditions? I, I would be open to having that conversation. I, I really would. And, and so um, I just prefer not to do it as one offs uh, um, in these these things. I, I'm, you know, so that's my 30 seconds. So, and so fundamentally, we're in agreement. I think we need to, to look at sustainable lawn practices where we come to an agreement about what restrictions we want to place and have that. I don't want to have it every single time this comes up. She, uh, Carol has given me a revision to the sustainable lawn practices that addresses this issue. Good. Um, Good. And I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for the, the agenda that I can, that we finalize where we anticipate less than 90 minutes of applications. It wasn't Great. this, it wasn't this week. Great. I, I appreciate that. And Carol, I appreciate you taking the time to, to do that and send that to Andrea. So. So thank you. Uh, any, anything else from the commission? So any public comment on 10 Barron Road, lot three? 
Raise your hand. So seeing uh, none, uh, make a motion to issue a permit for work uh, with the following conditions. Um, install and maintain lawn area in conformance with sustainable lawn practice policy. Recharge roof runoff from the Crows residential dwelling. Uh, install a more visible permanent marker as noted on the plan. Right. Um, maintain erosion controls in place until all disturbed areas can stabilize with vegetation and continue with perpetual conditions noted in the subdivision order of conditions permit. Special condition number one, all conditions of the CMP. Special condition number 49, no growth salts, sodium chloride, or D, other de-icing chemicals. Number 50, no dumping in the wetlands. And number 51, maintenance of stormwater management system. May a little second. Um, okay, roll call vote. Call fells aye. One dean aye. May a little aye. Okay, you were right, Eric. First one. <laughs> Okay, uh, next up is uh, 91 Summer Street. This is a notice of intent to construct a driveway to a single family residence, but we also have this issue related to a restoration plan. That is right. Um, Andrea, either Brad Holmes or Cameron Larson should be in the crowd. Can you promote them? Yep. Excellent. Cameron's got his hand up. Excellent. Great, thank you, Commission. Thank you, Cameron. So, uh, do you guys want to address the restoration plan first? Is that? I mean, I, I'm not quite sure. Did we did we come forward with just the restoration plan, and then we'll we'll think about um, the the other part of it later, or are we are we handling it all in one place? Today? Well, if, hang if on we, a second. Oh, here Eric, you. what did, did we we talked about this beforehand, right? We did, yes. Do we, what we, you can first with the restoration plan and be prepared to talk about the rest of it tonight. Absolutely, yes. So what, what we'd like to do is run through the restoration plan, show you the improvements that we made to that, uh, provided that we get through that in a timely fashion and we've all still got some warm, fuzzy feelings. Uh, we'll be glad to move into the, um, the notice of intent. Um, in short, I know there's a few things in Andrea's staff report on the notice of intent. Um, it, we have not had an opportunity. Unfortunately, I was out with COVID for the last three weeks. Uh, we haven't had an opportunity to revise the plan, but we are glad to agree and we condition anything that we can. Um, so if, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman, I'll bring up the restoration plan and start there. Go for it. Excellent. Let me share my screen. So this is the restoration plan. I don't know if I've, uh, I'm sure everybody can see this. It, it's kind of a large plan, so I'm going to zoom in and cover this in pieces here. Um, the last time that we were here, we presented a plan that required plantings within the 50-foot buffer zone and just seeding within the 50 to 100-foot buffer zone. Uh, the commission was not satisfied with that. So we went back. I'm sorry. Um, so we went back to the drawing board and expanded the scope of the plantings. So now... What we've come back to you with is a plan that shows everything that was altered within the 50 to 100, within the zero, well, actually within the BBW and the BBW buffer zones is now proposed to be planted thoroughly. Uh, we are proposing a total of, it looks like 100 and, now let me zoom in on this. We are proposing a substantial planting. We've got 162 and 72. That's 234 plants going in in the buffer zone. Um, that, that's a pretty good number of plants. We've got a pretty substantial area. Uh, we're totaling just shy of this is 9,000, 6,000, 15, um, I call it 16,000 square feet, give or take, of buffer zone restoration that we're proposing to put over two, almost 250 plants in. Um, so the idea is basically, if we altered it, we're going to put it back together. We're going to restore it a straight one-to-one. -one. Obviously, you know, we can't restore something that we didn't alter. So that's why we're proposing the one-to-one. -one. Um, the other thing that we added to this plan, let me zoom out a little bit, is you can see this shaded area here with the bold dashed line around it. 
that is the limit of work proposed on the notice of intent plans. You can see, obviously, unfortunately, the disturbances don't match that limit of work other than this small area here, which is why we didn't propose to plant this area here. Um, so that's the finer points on the restoration plan itself. Um, I think it would be probably best if we entertained any questions or comments on that before we moved on to the notice of intent. And I know Cameron's here, he can certainly chime in on anything we need. So I, I appreciate that you uh, you heard us loud and clear, and um, it was um, and and are looking to restore this back with a, a mix of uh, shrubs and uh, saplings that will grow into trees. Um, the the one question that I think I read in one of the the introductory uh, documents that um, there's an intent to remove some of the dead wood and, and leave some of it as well. Uh, Cameron, can you speak to that? Yep, sure thing. So um, the the brush and excess slash is, has been left along the route that was cut in. Um, so we, we proposed removing that slash um, and then leaving some behind and setting up some thickets of brush as a type of wildlife enhancement to the area. Okay. Um, so so I, I think that... Um, so I, I, I'm, I know personally, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. And, you know, I think this restoration um, is, um, uh, you know, what, what we asked for. So Carol, you had a question. Sure, thank you. Cameron, what do you mean by excess slash? Um, all the brush that was cut along that route remains along the edges of it right now. So trees were uprooted and pushed down. They remain along the route that was cut in and then um, shrubbery and all the brush that was cut on this access road remains in place along the edge of the road. Right, so what is what is excess about it? For instance, if we had a big windstorm that blew down all those trees, you know, they remain good habitat. They remain carbon that's, you know, sequestered. What I, is, why not leave them there? Well, it was, it, it's, it's a quite a bit that was cut down. There's some big, big piles. So we're just attempting to clean some, some of that out of the wetland area, out of the buffer zone, and then leave some in. So I think we'd be open to, you know, leaving as much as the commission would like, but there's some, there's a, quite a bit of it in there right now, piled up. And they take- We the call it landscape <laughs> in, in, in existing homes. Yeah, but to expand- and Nothing on grows underneath it. Say, say that again? Um, the Cameron, what I'm hearing is that this th these are piles where nothing's really gonna grow underneath it. It's, the vegetation's getting suffocated and you're trying to replant the areas. Essentially. So it's in piles. It's not kind of randomly where it, it laid. No, these are okay. large piles. Yep. Okay. What do you think about shipping some of that material on site to, to leave that? You know, to leave that resource on site. Um, typically, the typically commissions kind of see shipping and leaving it behind as you know fill within these areas. So we didn't we didn't want to propose that. Um, you know, if the commission thinks that that would be beneficial, you know, I, I would think maybe some could be chipped. But um, as the proposal stands, what we were looking to do was remove these large piles, leave some for wildlife habitat, and then go in and replant with a native mix of shrubs, saplings, and seed mix. All right. So I'm a, I'm a fan of, of leaving resources kind of where they are. So I wonder if there's a way to reuse, you know, chip it and, you know, use it as mulch later down the road, something like that. But anyway, that's just a, a concern I have. Um, uh, I also have, also have a question about, I need a reminder maybe from Andrea or Rory. Um, um, somewhere I was reading about, I, I guess I, I'm not sure how we got to this restoration. Of course, this restoration needs to be done, but I don't recall a conversation about um, taking a, a civil, civil or criminal action. Um, 
as far as I can tell, the applicant broke the law. And the, our bylaw says that any person who breaks the law shall be punished by a fine. So if, if we could if we could circle back and remind me how, we, if, how we've addressed that or not. I, I, think that, I think that we chose, as we regularly do with enforcement actions, to, to look at a, at a notice of intent that included restoration. I, I can only recall one time where we've taken a, 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 an applicant to court, and that was because he would not comply with, with the enforcement action. So um, it is an option. We typically only go that option when there's non-compliance. I believe that this applicant has been um, sufficiently cooperative in, in uh, addressing the, the restoration, so. I would agree with that, uh, Rory, just from my, my professional um, training, that the, the goal of, uh, of either DEP or the commission is, is to get the land repaired as quickly as possible. And fines are always available for those that are non-conforming. This was this act, this gentleman, as soon as he realized what was going on, had his professional engineer and wetland scientists back out to address the problem. Thank you honestly, you can't go to court unless you give somebody notice of what the violation is and how to remedy it. And then you address, you know, penalties. Okay, sure. Thanks for the reminder. I was just reading through the the bylaw. I wanted to. It's an option. We'll it's an option. Them. Okay, great. So um, another thing I'd like to see. Uh, last year we had a very. I don't remember the degree if it was extreme or severe or exceptional, but we had quite a robust drought last year. And this spring we're already in a drought. So my question is, how the heck are all these trees and shrubs going to be watered to get them established? And I would like to see some skin in the game. Uh, we do have a security provision in our bylaw to 2710 that asks for guarantee money. And uh, being such a big restoration, I would like to see, you know, something standing behind it. Uh, before the commission takes that up, I just want to point out that in the restoration plan, the, uh, the professional uh, scientist has said that it'll be monitored for two years to remove by hand invasives and unwanted species and any plant material dead or not thriving will be replaced. Reports to be submitted. Right, and then what happens after that? If, you know, things that, are, any plantings that don't make it get replaced. Is there another two year period to? You uh, often condition things to say, there's a certain percentage that needs to be addressed. It's usually 75%. I prefer, I prefer 75%. You can either say 75% cover or 75% of the material. You could up the game, but it's always been 75% um, in Easton and in and in as recommended by MACC. So is it 75% of the, the plantings or 75% cover? Do, do, would you recommend in this I, re I recommend 75% cover, um, but in this case, you're getting you're getting the ground cover. Um, we'll automatically address that. You could say 75% of each of the growing uh, strata. Cameron, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I believe what you're referring to, for instance, you know, 75% of the sapling layer, 75% of the shrub layer, 75% of the herbaceous layer. Correct. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm recommending. That's Correct. it. And then what over what period of time? I mean, if we had if you know for some reason we continue to have you know a drought at the end of this year and the beginning of next year and so on and so on. Scientists recommended two years. Your your standard language for restoration is three or the or the measure of success being uh, met, whichever is greater, uh -huh. longer. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Charlie, anything? Uh, I'm all set, Roy. 
I think the uh, the plan the way you came back with that number of plantings, I think it's, I mean, you have more than sufficient. I'm satisfied with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know that it's more more than sufficient. It certainly is sufficient. Um, you know, there was an awful lot of damage uh, that was done here. And, and you know, my, I, I was quite concerned the first meeting. I think concerned is probably an understatement of my, my uh, reaction at the time. So, um, so I, I do appreciate the, the response to the app that the applicant has made to this. I, I am satisfied with the plan as proposed. Um, so um, I, I think that um, you've given us what we, we need at this point, so. Excellent. Well, if, if we're satisfied with the restoration, does it make sense for us to move on and talk about the notice of intent proposal uh, briefly? Um, we do. Can, can I just raise a concern? Well, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you speak, and then then I'll I'll raise my concern. Maybe you address my concern. So I, let's just have you go for it. Okay. What are the pooch's names, by the way? Uh, my male is Magnus. My female is Sasa. Nice. And then their puppies that are seventeen weeks now are Ragnar and Sonya. Wow. <laughs> I got a zoo over here. <laughs> um, Rory. All right. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Rory. I just want to um, ask if we're tracking the 15 minute piece or if we're we're at, we're at 14 minutes. Okay. I'll be very fast. We're gonna close another one tonight. It's gonna be great. Um so, you know, the last time that we were here, when we first opened this, we started talking about the notice of intent plan and we got majorly sidetracked by the need for the restoration. So we kind of tabled everything and we haven't been back to the notice of intent yet. Um, since that time, we have made some revisions to the plan based on comments from in the staff report. Um, couple of things I'll just walk through briefly. Um, we have notation on the plan Right here, there was some some concern about the house being placed, you know, the septic system being placed within the buffer zone, uh, things like that. So we have notation. Uh, first note on the plan is that this notice of intent is meant to show the driveway only. Any work associated with the construction of the house, the septic system, et cetera, that is not depicted to be within resource areas or buffer zones on this plan shall be kept outside of all such areas unless an amendment to this notice of intent is approved. So I think hopefully that gives the commission a, a degree of comfort that all we're looking at is the driveway for this notice of intent and everything else is to be kept outside of jurisdictional areas. If for some reason it's not, which I could not imagine why that would happen because we have this beautiful bank of upland area here, we'd be coming back. Um, the other thing that's very important that we made changes to is you can see the dashed line along here that approximates that 50 foot buffer zone comes right down here where my cursor is and then keeps going through our limit of work back out to Summer Street. Everything on this side of the line is proposed to be a conservation restriction, uh, just like we did on 38 Randall, which actually, if you recall, this line here is the divide line between 91 summer on this side and 38 Randall on this side. So that conservation restriction area that we're proposing totals nine acres. So you're gonna have nine acres from this, you're gonna have four and a half acres from 38 Randall. Those are gonna tie together and they're gonna tie into the Metacomet area that's across Summer Street. I think it's 92 Summer Street here. Um, so I think that that is, is a huge benefit to the town. Um, and hopefully the commission can agree with that. Um, other things that we've done, we've, I believe we've added notation about sustainable lawn practices. Uh, we've added some details for stabilized construction entrances, stockpile areas, shrub planting details. Uh, we had initially, this right here is a blow up of the one area where we're asking for a waiver to go into the 50 foot buffer zone just by way of the shape of the 50 foot buffer zone. Uh, we originally proposed just some plantings there to, keep, to discourage people from encroaching in that area, from casting snow in that area, things like that. We're actually proposing now to beef it up and add a split rail fence along the side of the driveway there too, to keep people well out of that area within the 50 foot buffer zone, keep the snow out of there, all of that. So the only thing, and I don't wanna speak for Andrea, but I will just say briefly, 
I think one thing that we're lacking on this plan that we haven't had an opportunity to update yet is the idea of drainage along the side of the driveway. Um, Andrea has a proposal that we super elevate the driveway away from the resource areas, which would basically cause the stormwater runoff to come and be channelized down in this location here. Um, if the commission is amenable to that, we're fine with it, we'll agree to it, uh, hopefully we can condition it. I might suggest that it might be a bit of a better plan if we don't super elevate the driveway because it gets us away from that channelization um, that we end up in. My concern is that if we channelize on this side of the driveway, we basically end up with a pond or a puddle down here. If we let it flow toward the wetland where it goes now and we install some sort of a stone swale or a grass swale on that side to collect the stormwater runoff and evenly disperse it, I think that might make a little bit more sense in this case. Keep the stormwater going where it's going naturally now. Um, but I'm totally open to discussion on that. Those are the final points of the notice of intent. I'm sure I'm over my 15 minutes, so I will kick it back to the commission. So um, we're at 18 minutes and I'm gonna extend this another 15 minutes so we can try and talk our way through this. Um, so Andrea, can you give us some, uh, some summary here? Sure. The um, waiver request of the original project is item num paragraph number seven. Um, and um, he, spoke, he, he spoke to the issues of the alternatives at a very early, it seems like a, it seems like ages ago. Um, there is an alternative um, site design um, or layout design, which is no longer on the table, but was actually brought before the the planning staff. Um, and I I can say that we didn't even the planning staff didn't even recommend that it come before you. It this this is the this is the preferred alternative. Um, <laughs> In, in zoning, he could have, instead of having two lots, he could have had three lots, but there would have been a whole lot more um, disturbance to the wetland. And, you know, who's to say if those lots were all, you know, this was the better alternative. So take it from me, and he did bring it up earlier. This is the, this is the best alternative for um, his uh, right to develop uplands. Um, the minim the uh, avoidance and minimization was taken care of through erosion. I, I'm i not suggesting that I understand that the best way to do stormwater, if a professional engineer has a good way to infiltrate and, do, and what he's describing is some sort of treatment, not just a county swale that just, you know, pushes it off onto the surface, but he's actually infiltrating with some treatment, then who am I to say? Um, that he's wrong. He he gets he gets the point. He just needs to uh, show us, um, and uh, I think that can be a performance standard. Um, and then the restoration work is addressed through um, in in item eleven. The the lack of detail has been addressed on the plan through putting in the sustainable lawn practices, adding permanent markers to the plan addressing drainage and the note about um, a definitive statement that um, the additional work outside of the grading associated with the driveway is a separate application process, if at all. Um, and the restoration work, I think we talked about in, in, in detail at 12 um, and, you know, Cameron, and his team know what they're doing. It, they've done good work in town. Um, they want to be. They will be on. We will. Re, we will require. Um, at least I recommend that you require that um, it would be. Uh, it's. It has to be planted by a professional. They have to follow a professional wetland uh, scientist. It has to be monitored by a wetland professional for the two years or three. Um, and that you keep that 75% um, of each of the different layers, 75% of the individual plants, along with 100% cover. Um, the chipping was an issue, whether or not to, to bring some of the material back in. Um, I, I hear what Carol is saying, 
And if there's the ability to keep it below six inches, then maybe it wouldn't be considered fill. Um, but you don't want it in the wetland and you don't want it to, um, you know, they, they usually don't, and Cameron, you can speak to this. They don't, they don't usually chip at a, at a, a fine enough grade that you can put seed over it. So I don't think you want it in your restoration area either, which means he probably doesn't, you know, if he's, you'd have to, if you wanted him to put it on the developed section of the site, you might be restricting the time that the house can be constructed. You might say the restoration work has to be full, has to be successful before you can build the house. And that might be the two or three growing seasons it needs for the chipping to um, settle down. Um, okay, so I think that the one, the one area that, so there's two, well, the, the, the issue about the, the drainage for the driveway, um, we don't have to address that. The second issue is that the, the disturbance area inside the no disturb zone is being mitigated in a, a roughly one-to-one -one manner with plantings. And, and I think we've had this conversation before where um, since you're working in the no disturb zone, the typical um, offset here is at least two to one. So while the, there's plantings off to the side of the road to, you know, uh, enhance the, the, the buffer zone. Um, I, I don't think that it's sufficient um, to offset the disturbance. So I, I think if we take the square footage that's being disturbed inside the buffer zone, uh, my expectation is that we would be offsetting that two to one, not just one to one. Can, can I answer your question by asking a question or Maybe. answer your concern by asking a question? Sure. Um, I, in the original plan, it was a series of of bushes. Um, in the plan that the uh, Cameron Larson presented, it's a it's a hierarchical um, recreation of of the ecosystem lost. So it's not. It might be one for I, one. I, I'm actually not talking about the quality. restoration. I'm talking about the the area of the, the disturbance the driveway is making. But what I'm area. suggesting is that he extend that area right up. I oh, see. I see what you're saying. I if see. we may. Uh, that's interesting. I, I hadn't considered that. That's it's a quality versus quantity. Take, so for example, just so I'm understanding it correctly, if I take my draw tool, kind of take this area and bring it right up through here. Is right up to your split rail fence. Right up to the split rail fence. I don't take any issue with that. Yeah, I, I think that answers the question. Yeah. So I, 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 I really do like that, um, that, um, that suggestion. A any concerns from you, Cameron? No, I think that would be, that would be more than appropriate. Okay. Um, so a a Andrea, if I could just get some, um, um, so, those are my comments. Any any other comments from the commission? Okay. Yes, thank you, um, Eric. Um, you were talking about split rail fence, um, keeping snow from going over there. I have a hard time believing. I've seen stone walls taken down by snow plows. Um, I'm just, you know, we want to protect the plantings. Um, I'm not sure how to go about that along right along the driveway. Sure. No, I, I understand. You know, the thought being here is that, it, it, you know, it, a split rail fence or something of that nature, we're open to suggestion. Um, I, presumably, this would be, you know, it's a single family homeowner. It's not a road. So it would be plowed by the town. It would be plowed by the homeowner. Um, hopefully, they take a little bit more care with their own stuff is kind of, and not run over their own fence is kind of the idea. Um, I be frank, I'm not sure how much more we can do to protect that through the 50 foot buffer, but I, again, am open to suggestion. How about a storm disposal area, a snow disposal area? We, we can certainly put a snow disposal area. Um, you know, we could, 
down in this area here, we could stockpile some snow in this area on the outside of the um, uh, of the um, wetland area, and then up here, we can stockpile the rest of it up here in the uh, completely outside of the um, of jurisdictional areas. Would be okay with that. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I suspect um, a condition I don't have here, but I hear you saying it, Carol, is you're going to want a perpetual condition on no road salts. Right. <laughs> Thank you. We're fine with that too. Anything else? Charlie, anything? I'm fine. So Andrea, I, I guess, uh, so any public comment on 91 Summer Street? Raise your hand, put something in the chat so we know that you wanna be elevated. Attendees. So seeing, uh, seeing none. So Andrea, um, the, how to, is it possible for us to condition this without having the, the plans? A revised plan shall be submitted that adequately addresses the uh, stormwater uh, infiltration and treatment to the maximum practicable extent um, prepared by professional engineer and storm uh, disposal areas added to the revised plan along with the perpetual condition of no road salts and the revision of the restoration area to extend up to the proposed post and rail fence. Um, A revised plan shall be submitted. Okay, so, um, thank you, Andrea. I'll try and try and cover that. If, if not, Tish, you gotta go back and listen to <laughs> our 30 minutes in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have, I have a quick question, if I may. Is that okay, Rory? Sure. Sure, thank you. So um, stormwater management standards, um, including an operation and maintenance plan, have we addressed that in any way? Uh, yeah, Eric always puts a um, some sort of operation, uh, long-term plan together, but when you're dealing with storm trenches, um, it's pretty straightforward. Right. Is is there any maintenance on them? Like, what happens if they fill up with plants, invasive plants? Yeah, yeah we typically go through on on something like that. We go through them twice a year, spring and fall. Uh, we check for debris. We remove leaves, things like that. Um, if there are any clogs noted um, in the stone, we'll we'll want to refresh the stone, uh, things like that. So there there are there are some maintenance concerns that come with it, and we can certainly provide a short form operations and maintenance plan to go with whatever the final design is. All right, that sounds good. I'm looking at 50328 that requires a, a report provided to the commission uh, by January 31st every year. You're from, are we yeah, familiar? I've um, I've changed that condition for planning board as well as conservation to say that the annual inspections shall be done. They shall be, they there shall be a professional professional engineer checklist that is followed and those and maintenance shall be done as as recommended but the logs are only required up to be provided to the town upon request huh okay that's confusing because the 50328 says that failure to provide the report you know the applicant's failure to re provide the report by the due date results in a fine of up to hundred dollars per business day after so, January 31st. So, so how do we, how all, do we, in, all enforcement's discretionary. And if the conservation commission recognizes the value of not getting um, those getting bombarded with reports other than monitoring reports of wetland restoration and buffer zone enhancement, um, then you can write a condition that addresses the, the intent without being in conflict with your own regulations. Yeah, I, I, I would 
just to sort of clarify that I, I do not want staff time uh, um, spent um, on an annual basis maintaining stormwater reports. So I, I, I want I want the, the work to be done, um, and I, I prefer not to have staff time tied up uh, keeping track of reports. It, it would be I, I can imagine it would be a quarter time job just to do that. Thank you, Roy. Anything else? Nope. Um, so seeing no public comment, Eric, do you want to close the hearing? Uh, yes, please. Okay, so um, make a motion to close the hearing and issue a permit for work and order conditions, uh, noting that the waiver conditions have been met. Um, um, noting that uh, the rest, let's, let's start with conditions on the restoration first. Um, so um, the restoration plan as proposed, noting that 75% um, um, of the herbaceous layer, the shrub layer and the sapling layer um, uh, must survive uh, plantings um, and this has an annual um, inspection um, and at the end of three years or 75%, whichever is later. Um, and those must be replaced if not 75%. Um, I think um, I think that the um, so so I'm just a little bit concerned about writing up these order conditions and doing it off the top of my head here, Andrew. But it's really not in the the um, the staff report, so. Um, yeah close the hearing based on um, receipt of a revised plan that addresses, that's administratively reviewed and addresses all the conditions that we've discussed tonight. And then you can make a, um, and, then, and then you can deliberate at the next meeting. Did the revised plan under, did it, did it address what you intended it to? And if it didn't, um, then you can condition it to do a little more. Yeah, I mean, just because the part of this, part of my concern here, and just to explain to the, the rest of the commissioners what's going through my head here is that um, I, 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 you know, there's a conservation restriction that's going on this property too. And I, and I just wanna make sure that we condition this property uh, properly to recognize that conservation restriction because that's a big part of the waiver here. And so in order to meet the waiver requirement, I, I just wanna make sure that conservation restriction here is, but, um, but just understand if we close the hearing, we're not gonna accept any more um, um, information. We can deliberate on it, um, but, but, we, we, um, but we're not gonna you know, have them submit additional information. We're gonna do based upon the information that we have. Okay, so I just wanna make that clear. If, if we go this route, um, I, I think that this project is a little bit more complicated than most where I would normally um, try and, and get this order conditions off of my notes. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned about doing it, especially with the conservation restriction in place here. So um, I'm just gonna, um, I am gonna um, retract uh, uh, my motion, okay? Um, and I will make a motion to close the hearing. Uh, conti conti contingent upon the, the, the applicant providing us with an updated plan addressing um, the, the um, conditions noted uh, during the hearing. Give me a little second. Uh, this is a point of information. This is, so go ahead, Carol. Thank you. Um, uh, another concern just arose. Uh, I'd like to get it out be before we vote. Hang, um, hang, on, hang on just one second. There is a motion on the floor. Yep. Okay, this motion, we can't reopen the hearing now, okay? So there's a motion on the floor. The only way we can continue this is for us to defeat the motion. Okay. Okay. So are you asking us to defeat the motion? Yes. Or, um, or to... Uh... I, I just don't... I... <laughs> So I'm sorry. There's there's a there's a request that I have about the plantings. 
And I, I may, I, I'm, so let's, let's a roll call vote here. Call Fels aye. Milo aye. Uh, Lundy nay. Okay, so the motion carries, the, the hearing is closed. Uh, we will, so Eric, you need to get the the, the uh, new updated plans to Andrea. We'll see you hopefully briefly on the, the 23rd for however long it takes us to, to uh, deliver and issue the, the, uh, the decision. But he can't speak. Correct. Yeah. 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 No, right. I, I understand. So we're just, when we come back, I'm just. You're here I'm to like, listen to us. Plan. I'm just listening to you. You're correct. Okay, that that sounds fine to me. Uh, we'll get over. I'll coordinate with Andrea. We'll get all the plan touched up. We'll get this back in in time for the meeting. And we'll be good to go. Good enough. Thank all you. Right. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate everybody's help. Thank you. Thank you, Commission. Good night. Um, so I am going to uh, make a motion for a recess for five minutes. We'll be back at. Um, 813 um, and we'll see you all there. So if you, if you leave, just please mute yourself and turn off your video. Okay. Lundin second. Roll call, call Fells aye. Lundin aye. Okay, well, aye. Okay, we'll see you all at 813. Thank you.
Okay, it's 8.13. Is everyone back? Okay, so uh, next up is uh, 244 Prospect Street. This is a continued hearing for notice of intent for the construction of a single family home. Good evening, guys. Can you hear me? Thanks, Peter. Can I? How are you doing? Go ahead. Uh, Andrew. Just quickly, um, Peter, while you're getting set up, I just want um, the commission to know that both Carol and Charlie submitted Mullins forms, and so they can participate. That's good. When meeting this, thank you. <laughs> Otherwise, we, we couldn't have the hearing. <laughs> All right, uh, can you guys see my screen up? Yes. Okay. Uh, quick recap on the project. Uh, this was presented last meeting. Um, this is to finish constructing an existing foundation on a abandoned lot on Prospect Street. Currently existing on the site is just the foundation and um, some rough grading that was done uh, years ago. We left the last meeting um, talking about um, so the ACEC requirements of no increase in flow. So um, one thing we changed was we added a significant uh, roof runoff area in the front of the property under the proposed driveway. And uh, that is designed to accommodate 100% of the new roof runoff. Um, the calculations are down the bottom of that. I'm not gonna go through everything, but um, it's rated to handle 100% um, of the intended roof runoff. Uh, additionally, we, uh, we've proposed some additional mitigation. Um, our proposal last meeting was to uh, remove some soil in a 1200 square foot area that had been filled in after um, the previous project work limit was established. So we're basically looking to remove that material, bring it back to a, a native um, or an existing grade with some native vegetation in there. Um, so last time we had proposed just doing a, an upland meadow mix seeding. Uh, we have revised the plan to show a more diverse um, habitat, uh, including some inkberry plantings and some white oaks in the mitigation area. Um, additionally, it was discussed that because that area you know, was filled um, we would do some additional mitigation. So there's a 600 square foot area that we've added in the north portion of the lot up by the road. And um, that's, that's an existing kind of overgrown lawn area. So we're looking to, uh, to oversee that and extend our plantings up to the north, uh, providing an additional 600 square feet of uh, a in what we're calling an improvement, a buffer zone improvement area. Um, <clears throat> so those are the major changes to the plan. Uh, I'll take any comments or questions from the commission now. So Andrea, you want to uh, give us a summary of your staff report? Sure. Um, I spoke with uh, Peter and George Collins today about the staff. Yeah, Andrea, report. your video's off, just, just FYI. Oh, thought I had it back. Okay, there I'm back. Um, I spoke I spoke to them uh, today about the staff report, and that's how the additional 600 square foot area of restoration got added. The other thing he uh, has in here is a um, post and rail fence as permanent markers as opposed to, to the to the more discrete markers because because the lawn <coughs> is very restricted. In the waiver request, um, the alternative analysis uh, last time looked at the um, review of what the property looked like back in the 70s versus what it was proposed as 
in 2000, uh, proposed and authorized in 2008. And so, um, you know, we recognize this is closer than was approved in 2008. And I think that's why he put in an additional uh, buffer zone enhancement in here. He addressed the stormwater discharge. He always does a great job on erosion <coughs> controls, um, both for our public streets and our wetlands. And sustainable lawn practices have been added to the online application. So I, uh, um, if you believe that the waiver uh, public interest has been met, then um, I have a series of conditions um, to the other issues um, in my staff report at item 11. Is this a revised staff report from the original one? It is revised on the 15th. Okay. Friday. Okay. Well, Thursday. <laughs> Way ahead of the game. Way ahead. <laughs> Honestly, I learned a lesson, a PS, that um, giving the, putting out the staff reports on Friday, giving the engineers that extra day got me two revised plans out of three projects. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. I should get them up on Thursday. And a continuance. <laughs> Um, so, um, I, I think you've addressed the, the, the three questions that we had here. So, um, Peter, Peter, so I, I thank you very much for, for, uh, that particular issue. So, um, I, I have no further questions. Any commissioners have any questions? Uh, any public comment on 244 Prospect Street? Seeing none. Um, so I um, I'm going to make a Motion to Peter, you want to close the hearing? I would love to. Okay. I want to make a motion to close the hearing and uh, um, noting the conditions for a waiver have been met. Alternatives, uh, um, no reasonable uh, conditions or practical alternatives uh, will allow this to occur outside of our jurisdiction. Um, minimization of the maximum extent feasible. And uh, public interest um, is to um, restore this uh, property to a um, a, a, uh, a working home again, as well as uh, mitigation plannings um, uh, that were uh, proposed by the applicant. Uh, per, make motion issue a permit for work and order conditions. Um, don't think I think that. Uh, I'm just gonna say as, uh, as noted in the um, staff report. Give me a little second. Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Lundin, nay. Milo, aye. Okay, so two to one. Um, that's it, Peter. Thank you. All right, um, <laughs> I believe the next, um, item is a certificate of compliance for us. Uh, sure. So I was, I was going to stick around in case there's any questions. Sure. So uh, next one up is a certificate of compliance for 178 Chestnut Street. And did, and okay, the landowner is not here. Um, this is a certificate of compliance that was opened back in June of 2020. And um, we left it open because there was um, restoration planting, replacement planting of six shrubs or two saplings that were needed in the, um, in the septic upgrade area. There was a change of ownership. The new landowner wanted to get their feet under them. And um, 
she and I uh, reactivated this now. They planted um, eight shrubs, six fruit bearing and two other shrubs. Um, the six fruit bearing are doing very well. The two other shrubs, it's a little too early to tell. Um, but um, what's that? Eight out of, what's six out of eight? What percentage is that, Peter? Uh, three quarters. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I thought. <laughs> Good math. <laughs> you can't do it on top of his head either. Boy, I feel so much better. It's too late in the day. <laughs> the, um, so the with the restoration planting done, um, I recommend that you go ahead. The, the septic repair had been done. The permanent markers were in. The conditions on lawn care was no herbicides or pesticide use within 10 feet of the wetland and only slow release fertilizers within 25 feet of the wetland and 33 uh, fertilizer and sediment controls to prevent algal blooms, which I could not explain to the applicant other than um, she, should, she should use low re slow release fertilizer and uh, plants that are indigenous to the area so they don't need very much. Um, so uh, it, it's actually those were the conditions that were on the project back in when it was approved back in 2005. Okay. As perpetual. Any questions? Um, any comments on 178 Chestnut Street public comments? Seeing none. Um, make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 178 Chestnut Street, um, noting perpetual conditions. Uh, 31. 31. Yep. Sorry, I'm, I just was. I'm 31, 32. 31, 32, and 33. Hello, speaker. Uh, roll call vote. Caulfield's aye. Lundin aye. Miller aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Um, so, uh, 36 School Street is a request for a partial certificate of compliance. Um, Even a request for a complete. I recommend. I'm recommending. I see. Go as far as a partial, if you wanted to. Um, we have a. We have a request for 36 School Street. That was an order of conditions and permit for work issued in 2018, um, where the applicant um, put on a two-story garage addition to his house and an above ground pool. According to um, the, uh, we've got a NASBUILT plan, which here we are, and um, the area of impervious is uh is keeps up it's a little bit modified uh but it, it, it's the same amount as was was authorized um and the instead of having a splash guard on the pool they actually in they embedded the pool into a the patio so the patio their patio walls are actually a foot and a half taller than the pool, so the water has to stay inside the system. I, you know, um, Craig, the professional engineer, was okay with that. There is no splashing. There is no splashing. Mm -hmm. um, the the he did what he wanted to. He did the the project structures he wanted to do. But the concern that uh, uh, I had based on the um, review of the record that then Rory confirmed by his site visit on Saturday was that instead of doing restoration planting along the whole edge, a five to eight foot restoration planting along the whole edge of the limit of work, he chose to put native vegetation around his pool so that it was a more attractive pool. Um, and he hasn't uh, there's also another requirement for the waiver because he is 28 feet, 24 feet off of a uh, stream bank. The, the second piece was that he actually 
keep the storm water, there's a, there is a culvert on the, um, if you see existing lawn really, really large, there's actually a culvert that starts up where the edge of, I'm gonna annotate this if I can. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a stamp right here. There's a, here is the opening, right here is the opening of where the stream goes into a culvert and then it comes out over here. It's a, it's a catch basin that starts here, get this. And then, and then there's a, a, a pipe that goes upstream. And then, an, and then at the same location, there's an in where it discharges, there's an inlet for a, a pipe that goes downstream. Not DPW's finest hour. It is blocked. It is, it, uh, at the time of the, um, this discharge area is blocked. And at the time of the review, we saw a lot of scouring here, which is why uh, this distance is so darn close. Um, and he has not opened up the discharge point. Um, he did have a single conversation with DPW Highway saying it's our pipe. We don't know where the, where the outlet is. Um, we will find it and get back to you. And it's not their priority. So um, he has not been able to meet any of the um, enhancements that were required for the waiver, but he did install the uh, work that he wanted to do. So, so can you um, remind me, uh, when was this permit issued? 2018. And um, so what I'm recommend, one, one option is that you issue a partial with deadlines for submitting uh, proof of planting the full restoration area report on the CW, um, the CMP pipe uh, that locates the discharge point prepared by a professional engineer. It doesn't have to be the town's highway superintendent. Find the discharge point and and identify a um, restoration. So basically, re you could keep it open, you could deny it outright, or you could say, I'm giving you a partial, I'm extending the deadlines, and if you miss those deadlines, you're going into enforcement. So here's my take on this. Having been on the commission at the time we issued this permit, um, we were very precise about this, and, and we were very, um, deliberate about our our conditions on this um we it's an acec yeah it's in an acec he was in the no disturb zone but it was in a he, basically the lots in a no disturb zone uh, you know it's you know we did I and mean, we did a lot of work to reconfigure the location of the garage and the driveway to make sure it was the least impactful as possible um it is it, you know, I think that Andrea's comment that he got out of this what he wanted to, we didn't get anything out of it. So the, the mitigation plannings that were being done along the the um, the, the buffer, I mean, uh, along the boundary of the um, the wetland, um, just weren't done. I, I, that just is astounding to me. Like, and, and he chose to, like if he wanted to put plants around his 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 pool. That could have been done in addition to doing those plantings, but he did nothing to enhance the buffer zone. And so that's a bit of an egregious um, modification here. So he, he had conditions that were meant to, to have us uh, understand what the public interest on this was. So the, the stuff that he had for the public interest on this waiver, he has not done. I, I see no way to approve this. I, I I don't I don't see any way to give him a partial. He's done nothing to to the point of 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 meeting the conditions that were met on this, other than doing the plan that he wanted, which was to build this two story garage with a a, a room over, over the garage plus this pool. And, and I I'm not you know faulting the guy for having the work done, but I'm faulting him for not doing the work that we required to offset. The impacts that he was going to have on this, so um, I, I'm not in favor of approving this. And to be
be honest, I, I'm uh, I, I'm willing to deny this. I'm with you, Roy. Egregious was uh, was a good choice of words on that. Um, I hate to say this, I can't find my copy of the order. I suspect we put a deadline in there, and I think what I'm what I'm hearing is that we are we are denying and taking enforcement action for missing the deadlines. Um, so not knowing what those deadlines are, I don't, you know. Yeah, I'm if I I'm going to go on to Permadive to find it, and I could you could I could lose my connection. I just want you to just warning you. I'm here. I um, at the time I wrote this, I knew, but that was a while ago. Ish, what's your comment? Okay. Uh, I'm okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna. You gotta unmute and uh, share your screen. Okay. Um, she's rather than me losing my connection. She's pulling up the uh, special condition page of the um, order. Um, where I believe there was, it was, um, the stormwater outfall is special condition nine. And the plantings is special condition. And the plantings are special condition number. So do you want me to go into the so COC? Go into the COC, go to the page that speaks to um, the special conditions. It's usually like page nine. Page nine, you said? Yeah, uh, right up there. Uh, the top, at the, the I go further up. The page that has the plans uh, listed, the special conditions that we add in. Oh, okay. Okay. The total area, uh, eight foot wide crushed stone. Applicant shall manually remove the debris. That was number four. Main, uh, keep the inlet and the outlet is number nine. Okay, then go down the page. Oh, Duffer Zone Replacement, number 10. Um, a double row, no more than six feet on center, uh, other than relocation. Okay, there's no timing. So he, it, it's 20, it was issued in 2018. He has one more year to get that done. So rather than take enforcement, um, you can, if you want to deny it, you say, come back. Uh, you have one year to get this done. Come back with it done. Well, he really only has six months because it was September 2021. Right. He has enough time to ask for an extension. Yeah, I um, I, th I think uh, you know that that the, the fact that um, I think the only thing that he did was take the debris out of the woods. So, West to stare at that. From, uh, yeah. Um. Right. So. Uh, so denying is saying that the conditions aren't met. And, and that's what I'm saying, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, is there, is there an advantage to us to keeping this open as opposed to denying it? I, I, I don't imagine there is. No. Okay, so I, I make a motion to deny this uh, request for a certificate of compliance. Reload second. Uh, roll call vote, call fells aye. Undy night. Mayor I. Okay. Thank you for the help, Tish. Okay. Um, geez. 
I didn't see meeting minutes. Were there? <laughs> yes, there was. Uh, there was, but you can. Um, it's page seventeen. The page eighteen. It's March fifteenth. But if you didn't see them, that means you're not ready to vote. Anybody else see them and review them? I'll trust you. No. Or you guys just think I'm going to read them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, c I couldn't open the link and I forgot to, uh, to follow up. Yeah, you, can is. you can read them to us. <laughs> we'll go to sleep. <laughs> I'll be on my 15 minutes. Uh, let, let's defer the meeting minutes just because I, I didn't get, I, I now I actually recalled seeing them and said, oh, I'll get back to that, but I, I didn't. So it's been a busy week. Um, so uh, enforcement orders, you want to bring us up to date on uh, on these enforcement orders. Do we, do we have somebody in the audience that's one of these uh, properties? No, Mr. Doyle is um, a, um, uh, in, he's not associated with these, with these two properties. Okay, fine. So the part of the, in part of the um, environmental planner updates is that the um, well, there's a couple things um, I was going to but we'll start with enforcement orders um, there are three projects at the moment that two are two are I'm requesting enforcement orders a third is I am prepared to send a letter of before you get into enforcement mode let me um, remind you not to mow behind your permanent markers. Um, so that's a pretty easy one. If you want to talk about it, we can. Uh, let me share your, my screen. And the first one I'd like to talk to you about is 3436 Pequannacut. Um, can you see the natural features plan? Because I yes. can't. Yes. There. Yes. Yeah, there you go. OK. So. Um, I'm going to stay down here. The site is this black mark right here. Um, can you see my little cursor there? Yes. yes. It's a two family, it's a duplex with a barn um, and a lawn area. Now, the actual wetland line is probably um, closer to uh, the change in grade, the change in, in the color of the, um, it's probably closer to here as being the, as being the wetland on the site. Um, and it is a extensive wetland with, um, the Pequannacut Brook and a series of other little brooks coming in at the top of Old Pond the pond that is closest to Pequannacut. So what, it's in an ACEC, the Canoe River. It has extensive uh, work in the back. And <clears throat> I'm stopping to share, that's what the site looks like, but I'm gonna pull up the, the, site, can, the site plan um, did not require, here we go. Um, I'm bringing up some new pictures. Okay, next picture. Okay. Here is the next share of screen. This is why Rory does it, because mm -hmm. I'm a little slower. Okay. So can you see this picture is, oops, I can't even see it. There it is. Okay, so this picture is the um, Pequannacut, the house, the wetland is back here. What you don't see in this picture, so all his work um, back in 97, um, the, to redevelop, to develop this site was outside of your jurisdiction. Um, so there's no review, but what happened is the lawn was extended into our 
jurisdiction a long time ago. And it turns out that there's a bunch of old fill that goes within 50 feet of the wetland. And we wouldn't have known it if this guy didn't bring in excavated fill from his neighbor's yard um, to extend his lawn about 50 feet from the wetland in an ACEC at an elevation change of two feet to four feet. So it's kind of a steep grade. And um, in the photographs that I have, and I almost hate to share, um, the, where are they? In the photographs that I have in a different folder, um, the, he hasn't actually finished putting all his um, fill out, but at my request, he's already got a um, siltation barrier installed. I'm going to share this screen now. I'm going to move it. Okay. Um, He's got his siltation barrier in place. Um, can you see? I'm not sharing. I'm sharing now. Okay. Can you? That's. This is an old line of fill. This is the wetland down here. This is an old line of fill. This is the new fill. Looking to the north. This is erosion that's been going down. This is at its narrowest point. It's only, you know, like 18 inches or so, but up here it is uh, closer to, to three feet or so. Um, and it's eroding down. So he put a silt barrier in place. Um, I do have an enforcement order suggested. The question I have for you, um, this old fill, this is clean fill that came from a pool. Um, needs to be stabilized. This is old fill, which was had debris. It had bituminous. I've seen old metal um, in, you know, out in this area. So um, he's coming in for a notice of intent. And the question I have for you is, um, do you want him to remove all the fill back to the lawn? that is within our jurisdiction or do and only keep the fill needed to kind of level it off he will then have like a four foot slope or do you do you want him and he can he can put in some retaining walls or would you consider sort of a graded area of fill here since it's fill on top of old fill um and it's in the buffer zone Obviously, he's going to be requesting a waiver, but the question is, other than, other than, you know, planting it with native vegetation, how much new fill is acceptable? Um, and I, act, my, the re the reason, if you haven't, if you don't already hear what I'm saying, it's the stuff below, is nothing grows on it. It's, and and nothing has grown well on it. Um, so by putting in some clean fill on top of it, you have the ability to put in native grass seed that might actually grow and address, um, and, you know, you can address the planting. The question is how much fill is too much and you'd never, you know, this doesn't come up very often. So, um, he's willing to act fast. And I don't think you want to leave it the way it is because the tree that you see in the distance is actually um, the fill actually came up about uh, two or three feet. And I have another photo of that of um, into that area. So I know he has to scoop out there. But, um, you know, do you want him to just put down 12 inches of fill and then have a and then have a slope back to his. Um, lawn area that's not as extreme. Um, so what's the, what's this? How is the slope handled? Well, how was the slope handled prior to the fill going in? Well, see, this is a ninety-seven plan, and there's no suggestion. There's no grades. There's no lawn area. There's no 
there's no um there's there's no it was never addressed by conservation commission and the lawn never came in for a review so i don't know how it was addressed because this is what i'm looking at today trees have been taken down um fill has been put in place and um and what i see at the toe of the slope is crap it's not high quality it's not high quality buffer um and so i sus and and it's also there's a lot of bad housekeeping um of that area so i can only anticipate that the housekeeping wasn't any better but so i don't know how the slope was handled because i have no i have you're not going to be able to figure out grade um on yeah, an aerial it's, photography it's, 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 it's hard to see from the aerial photo you know yeah it really is I mean, it's hard to, I mean, it looks like it might be a little slope, but it's hard to see. It, I suspect, I suspect a, a gentle grade would make sense. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm, and I, if you're willing to be, if you're willing to, to, to do it, that if you see this line, um, down here, um, and I, I didn't say this to him in the field, but this is the line of the old fill right through here. And it's a step down. So what is that? Six inches, eight inches, mm -hmm. and it's crap. Um, I would say take some of this clean fill, go right up to the old line, maybe six inches, um, and then replant on top of it. But there's a whole lot. There's truckloads of fill that has to be removed from the site. And gentle grade. It's only a good idea, Andy, but I think anything bituminous or stuff in the back has got to get cleaned out of there first. It is. It's bad stuff back there. There is some bituminous. There is some metals. I mean, you have the ability to restore um, land you didn't know was impaired. But you're right up against the wetland. You're like within, you're within 25, 30 feet of the wetland. And it's, it's, the wetland is high quality. Yeah, it's one of these cases of, you know, is your work going to disturb more than it's going to enhance? Well, he's got, he, he, he's got a base of the bad fill to work off of. Um, and that's, we didn't know about that, but now we're addressing, now you have to address that too, but that's only a couple in, you know, it's only, it's less than a foot. This is, this is way more extensive and I assume you want to get rid of a whole lot of it. Right. Um, yeah, man, it's a can of worms, isn't it? It is, it is. I mean, I'm, I, um, uh, it's not a simple, repair back to existing can just remove what you did and put it back to existing conditions because it turns out the existing conditions of the previous landowner um, was pretty bad housekeeping. Um, so is, it, is there a way for the, the material that's at the base of the slope that's closest to the wetland to, to remove that and replace it with this clean fill? You can't um, create, without can creating ask. too much work, too much damage. I mean, he obviously has a big machine that he's working with, so I can tell him what your desire is, and then when he puts his notice together, he can he can try to figure out how best to address your desire. So, Char Charlie, how, how you, you had talked about you know how, you know getting that cleaned up? How, how would a, a how would somebody go about? cleaning up the fill, the bad fill that's there? Is it simply removing it out, trucking it out, and replacing it? Well, what I would do, I, I'd sit a big machine up on top. Actually, you can, the new fill, you can dig a little bit of a, just enough to trench, you're not sitting up on a mountain, walk the big machine in, and you can remove that with the bigger machine. There's a machine called a grade all, too. You'll see slopes on highways that go up sometimes 40 degree, 30, 40 degree angles. And you're able to, you know, the, the bucket on the machine, you're able to contour it. 
And with a combination of two machines, it's definitely doable. Can I talk to Charlie about how how to how, get get him, have Charlie give some advice to this young homeowner? Um, the he's he does have a lawn that extends into your jurisdiction before he bought the property, and it was much higher than existing than the grade down there. So um, I assume you want something gentle where the new fill is and fill over the old fill. And we'll talk to Charlie about how he can best do that. I'd, I'd be very curious underneath that old fill to dig down into the water table, get some water out and get it out for analysis and see what, what's in there. I'd be very curious to find out. I, that's, that's the can of worms. Very much so. Do you know what I mean? It's like, this is one of those cases of if you go poking around, I, I don't know. If you find it, what are you going to do about it? That's the thing, you know? That's mm -hmm. right. and, and it's so, a residential site. So chances are it can't be, I mean, it's not like it was not, it wasn't a commercial site. Right. It's, it's small. It's not, there's no machinery back there. There are no car parts. There are no, um, it's just, it's just, you know, litter, um, um, you know, cans old it's bituminous i don't know what he used for phil he used what he had he used what he got his hands on when you get back down to the edge of that wetland you know the, um, a very good wetland does it seem to be thriving okay it doesn't, doesn't yeah seem to be, huh? yeah but Flat look at the green you see the green in the picture yeah i do i'm looking at that the green on the picture is where the wetland line is okay and so, you know, it's, you know, I, I don't know that it, there isn't some kind of nutrient source, but the nutrient source isn't the, isn't the fill. I, I would do what I suggested then because you can, you know, you see tin cans and things, I mean, it's not the end of the world, uh, but you don't know what's underneath that. So I, I, I would say, you know, get as much of that old fill out as you can. Then what you say, Andy, you bring the slope down and uh, put some good stuff and let it go with that. I, I, I mean, I think that, that that's a, a little bit of the, disturb it as least amount as possible, be gentle, you know, put better fill in there and, you know, bring the lawn back to where it was and not extend it beyond where it, was, it already was. I mean, that's my thought process. Take a lot definitely, of that. Go definitely a good silk sock along the whole. It, he's actually got a silk, a silk fence up right now. So uh, yeah, there's another picture that Andrea sent to me earlier that, uh, that showed the silk fence in place already. He put that in the next day after he originally talked to Andrea. For me, I'm inclined, you know, it's, uh, Charlie, you were talking about bringing in a, a great all, a couple of machines. Um, I know the, you know, what you're talking about can be done with a couple of machines, but that would be kind of like giving me a hammer and ask me to build a house. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I, for me, I want to have a professional opinion about, you know, a, some kind of environmental person opinion about how to handle this. Yeah, I, I think the guy's going to have to come in with an NOI. Yeah. Oh, so, there's no question. There's no so, question. But I, I think I think NOI. what I think what I think what we should do, and yes, I think we should just give them sort of the general scope of what we think we needs to be done here, and then they come back to us and say, "Well, that's really not the best way to do this." You know, but do this. Like, if our goal here is for him to remove as much of this fill as possible, maybe leave you know six or eight inches of it um, to to you know, have the slope be more gentle, um, and we might allow for that. But, um, and then maybe if we can clean up this area, how would you go about it? I, I think you're right to say, not have us describe to them how to go about it, um, but have them tell us how you're gonna go about it. We wanna clean up some of the, the junk that's out there, maybe replace it with the fill that's on the, the lot right now. Um, does that seem reasonable? And you know, a lot of the stuff that you can see, like uh, Andrew was saying, tin cans and stuff, you're not going to get 100%, but you could 
scratch around a little bit with a shovel here and there and just remove by hand what you can see and get it out of there. He, yeah, he's planning to do that. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Rory. Good. So I, I think Carol's point is correct. Let, let's give him some general idea of what we're thinking about here as far as restoration is concerned and have them come in with an NOI and, and let's get this fixed. Okay, and I assume we go back to the existing lawn. It's okay at the existing lawn area for him to, for him to grade. Um, you know, it it was, but he's he's got to create this more gentle area here. I got it. Um, I'm gonna if if you, um, if you I've got a a, a enforcement order drafted. Um, and I was waiting for the remedi for the remediation. If you want, I can issue, or um, and it gets ratified at the next meeting, or you can um, have them come in at the next next meeting, um, and so that he has a so that he hears from you what's needed, and you can ratify it on that night. get into these uh, I'm just trying to remember the situations that we get ourselves into in, in sort of being too um, gentle with with uh, um, I would recommend I, I, I if left to my own devices I would say the professional restoration plan um, he's going to need 90 days to get his notice of intent in Okay. Um, and I did a I did a rough um, wetland line to give him um, a sense of how close the toe was to a wetland. Um, if you want it professionally delineated, um, that's that's going to obviously he's got a professional coming in anyway. So so there'll be a surveyor involved as well. Yeah. So I I don't um, does anybody have a preference of issuing the enforcement before talking to this guy? I, I don't have a problem doing that, but he's been cooperative so far. If there's any, I mean, I'm not trying to say chalk them first, Rory. Okay, I can do it as a letter. I don't have to do it as an enforcement order. I can say, spoke to commission, got their guidance. They want you in on the third. This is what they're looking for. Um, and you he's know, come in with a plan. He's been cooperative. He's, yeah, it looks to me like he needs some yeah, guidance. The, and he's he's willing to go what, along with it. That sounds the, the great. One, yeah, the, the one thing, though, that I will say that, that I'm more inclined eventually to get an enforcement order on the books, um, strictly just to have that hanging over him to get to the NOI and get everything done. Yeah. Um, we just, we, we've had a couple of instances in the past where we've tried to work with applicants, and it's really been a, uh, we've pulled them along much more than we've needed to. And so yeah. let, let's give him a little bit fire under him and you know so the, bottom it's, line it's not, the, the enforcement the enforcement order isn't meant to be punitive it's just a this is what you got to do right saying in other words if he does what he's supposed to do the enforcement order is almost a moot point yeah well the enforcement order is getting noi in here right. you know that's that's the enforcement order yep. with a restoration professionally drawn restoration plan that's correct yeah that's Sounds exact good. that that's exactly what i told him to expect right is yeah, that right is that I'd get guidance from you tonight, but that the enforcement order would be issued so that he understood what we discussed. Sounds good. Okay, I'll draft it up. If any, uh, would anybody like to review the language of the document before it goes out? It goes out under my signature, you still ratify it afterwards. I'm fine with what you draft, Andrea. Okay. I'm good too. Okay. Okay, that was the pretty, um, that was the one that concerned me the most. But then there's another one um, at 20, at 80 Short Street. And 80 Short Street. Um, I, I just had to say, when you said there was a bobcat at the end of the driveway, I literally thought there was a bobcat, like a real, you know, It's been happening, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, so, uh, which That's one? That's how long my day had been when I read it. <laughs> it was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
um, they in this one, I get the fill line is in a different place. Uh, darn it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm sharing my screen again. Did I share one? Did I share just one? Okay, yeah. You can see it? Okay. Yeah. So, house, fence, line, bobcat. <laughs> um, this is a wetland. It, back in 2007, a septic uh, plan was, uh, a septic as built was written for, was was uh, the asphalt plan was prepared in 2007 and um, a, a request for a certificate of compliance was actually issued in 2011. And so the 2007 plan shows a fence line and that shed. But what has happened since then is he's installed this gravel drive and Here's the edge of the wetland and the toe of the gravel drive. And there's the bobcat. And um, there, you know, it's used for all sorts of things back there. Um, this was not, this was all supposed to be left undisturbed. Um, I spoke to him back in September during COVID um, and said, showed him the plan that was approved in two, uh, the as-built in 2007. We talked about what was new. We talked about the pavilion, the pool pavilion he wanted to put on the other side of the fence and how there was no way he could come in for a pool pavilion with this, with this um, non-compliance in place. Um, and he sent an email back a week later and said, you know, all things being equal, business isn't what it's like, usually like if I could wait to get my notice of intent in in the spring, um, wouldn't that be great? So this is what happens when you do, when you do, um, you know, speak to a person, have an email exchange and don't issue an enforcement order. It's June, now it's April, I went back there the bobcat wasn't there before. He said, oh yeah, I use it to, I just park it there and that's what I use to shovel my driveway. It's like, okay, maybe, but you've got a driveway. Um, so he needs to come in. I would like to issue the enforcement order that I should have issued in September saying that you've got less than 90 days to get an existing conditions plan of today a request to bring this back to the conditions of the 2007 plan and you no longer have a parking spot for your bobcat in a, in the inner 50 foot buffer zone. Well, can, I, can I ask a, a quick question here? So, so is he using this area to sort of as a storage area for his business? No. No, he just, um, no. Just he, this, he did all this work to be able to drive his bobcat down outside his fence? I'm, I'm trying to understand what, what the rationale is for this drive. Back in, back in the, in the, when the, when the septic upgrade notice of intent was issued in 2008, the staff report said the former owner had been using the wetland as a dumping ground for his leaf debris and his landscape. And he, you know, and so the edge was, she thought the edge might have been five to 10 feet in from where it was before, just because of all this old fill. So he comes, so this new guy buys the property and he says, Oh, I saw this wetland and it was really very untidy and I needed to clean it up. And with my bobcat. <laughs> and gravel and sand. And, and gravel and sand to get the bobcat back there in order to do the cleanup. It was only oh, for good intentions. That's, that's nuts. Oh and God. I was like, I don't believe you. Uh, good intentions aside, you need a notice of intent and you need to restore back to what it was. And yeah. uh, um, 
So I just want to I just want to be on the record that he's been out of compliance since September that I've known about. The neighbor so is there. Event. There's a neighbor who started the complaints. He's very concerned that there's a vernal pool. In the staff report, all you know, putting you know, putting it all out there. In the staff report, there was the comment that this isolated wetland might be hydrologically connected to the BBW behind the property, and maybe there's a potential vernal pool behind the property. It's not this piece. I could be wrong, Angie, but I think that I think that may find its way into Moss's pond too. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. It is the it's pretty I wouldn't be surprised, Charlie, because the wetland behind is is a bigger wetland. Yeah. I don't think the potential vernal pool, I just want to at the is this wetland in the front. Not from what I saw. Not not from what I saw in April, not from what I saw in September. Okay. Um I don't, I'm saying it probably does hold some water, but it's not in, it's not the classic vernal pool. Um, gotcha. Oh, different. Oh, that's my other guy. This is not, I mean, you can see that there's some staining in here, but it's not the same thing. Um, so I'd like to issue this enforcement order. I don't think you need to have him come in next week next hearing to find out what he needs to do. I think you just need a notice of intent in 90 days, you know. Good enough for me. Anybody else? Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Okay. Huh, thank you. I'll issue, that one is issued. Um, anybody wants to read it? I think I sent my inspection notes are what you see for a wetland. Um, Rory, we need a vote on that? Yeah, oh. that'd be great. On the enforcement order, do we need a vote on that? No. Make a motion to issue the enforcement order, 80 Short Street. Give me a little second. Uh, roll call vote. Call tells I. Give me a little. Do you want to do a roll call on the other one? Uh, make a motion to issue a, a, a enforcement order to 36 Pequonicut Ave. Give me a little second. Roll call vote. Call tells I. One D nine. Give me a little I. Thank you very much. Um, other things on the agenda were for me um, were the um, uh, we've gotten farther along in our um, Sam Wright field. We've modified where the wetlands are. They're within the limit of work, and instead of being, you know, they're smaller areas, they're lobes, but they are right up against where the um, soils. We actually did soil pits this time, and this is where the good soils are. So um, it's there was always going to be a combination of of flood plain and BBW. If you want, I can go through the new plan as to what it looks like. I'd like to see it. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I did it again. Share screen. Sorry. Um, okay, you see it? Yep. Yes. Okay, this is what was blue was, let's just make this whole thing wetland. And then this will be this will just going to scrape off the the uh, concrete and um, all the concrete's been scraped off and the concrete extended from the top of the screen down to the bottom of the screen. This is Mulberry Brook. We actually found concrete down in this side that we didn't expect because it was in the field. Um, so all the concrete's gone, and then we did test pits. We There's a stream over here, and there's the big pond here. This is a dam, and then this is the rest of Mulberry Brook, and it goes to the south. And we found good wetland soil here, good hydric soils, just um, a foot, uh, two and a half feet down. 
here it's about um, one and three quarter feet down. And then down in the south where we didn't expect to go, we actually have uh, the brook coming in here and then a, then a channel coming here. And that's the old fence line. We can actually go right up to the old fence line. And this area looks like wet meadow already. So we'd be scraping off a lot less area and would get our wetlands. So it ends up being three lobes of wetland and one, two, and three. And this area scraped off a foot. Um, it allows us to continue to have um, access through this area and down across the um, dam here where there's actually three culverts and then we can go and then we can get rid of this fence line and we can actually get to the to the um trail that act that exists on the other side um and it's simpler to do and it gives us wetland areas that we can probably work with great so if you're okay with it we're inside, we're inside the work area and we're doing it differently. Anybody you, have gave any us rest, you gave us some um, minor ability for Brad and I to make decisions in the field, but I wanted you to take a look at this. I, so because of that, you could do this as a minor mod, but because of, but I wanted you to see it because it looks different than it did before. So you, do you need us to vote on this minor mod? Are you, are you because we gave you permission to do it, we don't have to do that. If you want to, you can. You don't have to because you, you gave us permission to do it. I just wanted to make sure you're on the same page. On the, on the same page. I, I am excited about the work being done out there. Yeah. So. yeah, it it makes me crazy because it's like not easy. But we're gonna. This is gonna happen before June 25th because you all know June 25th is a very important date in my life. I got it. And it's just. It's the it's the Friday before the this grant is due. So this <laughs> keep up. Um, the so um, there, the volunteer monitoring is going to very much be involved. And Carol, I think you signed up to be a citizen monitor. And um, Ed Hands and Jonathan Chase and Rory at the time thought, wouldn't that be grand? Um, and the uh, we do have people preparing checklists of the kind of things you're going to see out there. And, and uh, once I get this area excavated, we'll be talking about doing that as well. Yeah, I, I'm okay. in. So. Okay, good. Um, wow. I, and so then the only other thing is that trail work has started at Pequonicut. Oh my God. Uh, remember Owen Eldridge creating a new three mile trail? He was out this weekend on Sunday and he was out last weekend on Sunday. Chris Patrick is the Eagle Scout coach. He wasn't able to make it this Saturday. This Sunday, I asked for CONCOM members to be with him. Um, he, I couldn't get a CONCOM member, so I got a, a volunteer release from his dad, who, you know, knows how all the Boy Scout motto of, you know, tread lightly and, and you know, don't cut anything you don't have to and, does everything Chris Patrick tells him to do anyways. So he was a pretty good adult to be on, on call. But um, this Wednesday from 12 to 2, they're going to be out again. I'll go out with them um, for part of the time. Um, next Saturday, the 25th, Sunday the, uh, Sunday the 1st, and then the following weekend, the 15th, 16th, and then, and then Saturday the 29th, I sent – I, I – we set this up saying that commissioners would be there. And as, as I've been asking for commissioners, when they give me no notice, commissioners aren't always available. So um, I'm making a personal plea that somebody besides Chris Patrick be available so on the dates given and I can resend the dates. Can, can you circulate that to all, all the members plus the associate members? Right. Um, I've only done it selectively, like a couple at a time, but now I've got to send it to everybody. I need set, it's your land. It was a conceptual plan. You didn't ask for a permit. Um, we said we'd be there. 
and I don't go out on weekends. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the only time I go out. So, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So it doesn't really listen, listen, you get some permits around you get some permits around that and I'll be out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I will recirculate. I'm just saying that it's happening now. This is the guy who put in a grant for um, the materials to do the boardwalk because there's like 500, maybe 600 feet of boardwalk needed. Um, he's doing only upland area and he um, and, and and he's working with he's working with your associate member, so I yeah, think we're okay. Circle that around it. I mean, I'll, I'll try and find. I'm I'm busy till the mid May, but um, yeah, you know, I, I can I can find some time after that probably to at least be out there. And I, I I'd like to get out there with Chris one day anyway because I, I know very little about the trail now. So I, I would like to get out there anyway, okay. even if even if Chris is going out there. Yeah, and and I can tell you, Jonathan is a wonderful associate. His yep. his focus is Wheaton Farm, and we give him plenty of work at Wheaton Farm. Yep. Um, Stefan's got three young kids. He's your other associate. His focus is flyaway. No, and so so it's Mike Spadia who said he'd be here for this project, um, and the new commissioners. Um, if you guys have the time, that you're. You know, that's the problem. Associates get to pick areas. It's, it's no problem. I mean, I, I've actually been out on Sam Wright uh, with Jonathan one time. It was a wonderful experience. Oh, God. It's great. Okay. Um, the emergency, Nothing new at the emergency cert. Tufts Farm, we're having a, an evaluation committee meeting either tomorrow or Thursday. I can't remember which one. We've got to set up the... It's tomorrow. We need that Zoom link, though. I need the Zoom link. Because I like I have so much else on my mind, I never got mm. the Zoom link out. But we did tell you about it. Yeah, and I've, I've got it blocked off on my account. So. Good. And then um, that's that's it. And then ECAP. Um, Priscilla um, Almquest Olson originally asked for conservation commission members for a ECAP yes today yesterday. Um, not sure how that. I'm not sure if the topic what the topic ended up being, I, I think it was invasive, I think it was plants, right, Carol? No, it was vernal pools and wetlands. Okay. Um, do you want to speak to that? Uh, sure. It was, um, uh, I invited two boys who were about, uh, they're in third grade, uh, and I had met them in a vernal pool out on a walk with Kyla. And uh, I had the idea of making a video of that ex experience and um, Kyla rustled up a, a, a filmmaker. And um, so we made it about, um, kind of made it about kids and them thinking about their futures. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thinking about their future as Vernal Pool pond watchers? Sure, yep. I asked them, the last question I asked them was, um, if you were king of Easton, what would you want to do for the vernal pools to protect them? So they got to answer that. Yeah, so connect them, the connect them directly to it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. Um, she also asked to have me come out on the 10th of May to do an inter to do a talk on the interactive trail map, Easton Trails. Um, I uh, was going to ask either Mike Spadia or Chris Patrick, or uh, if the old Eagle Scouts that did the um, mapping were around, because their parents still are, um, have them join us. But they want to talk about trail work, trail work and, and trails on conservation land. So that would be May 10th. So um, and what would you guys recommend the message to be? You know the interactive trail map, I mean. You know, it's really cool to watch and play with. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll right. be ready for it. Got so much screen sharing. Um, what, what else would you like the What would you like the message to be on on trails in so, conservation land? So, so I think I think the message has to be that it's entirely volunteer driven. <laughs> you, you know that that um, this is a community project, not strictly a. a a town funded project because we actually don't 
have the resources to do that. So, um, you know, I, I think that that sort of has to be the message to me that that's the strongest message. I think that, you know, we enjoy these trails, but we have to be part of maintaining them and, you know, and, and, and building them. So, um, you know, people that are interested, you know, should be um, speaking up and, you know, and our, our goal here is to get people out on the, the properties. I mean, it's one of the, the great things, but we have all this property and mm -hmm. everybody knows about borderland, but they don't know about all the other properties in town, which maybe, maybe that's good <laughs> for those of us that get out and use them. But um, I think that considering that some of these properties are very close to downtown, it, it's a great opportunity to, um, you know, sort of leverage that. I mean, to me, that's the message. I, I think anybody else have comments about it? I mean, Carol, you're out in the, the, the trails all the time. Sure. Yeah, I would. Um, it's an opportunity to poll people about what, you know, the public residents, what they would like to see, what improvements they would like to see in signage. You know, what would be the best kind of sign for you? We could, you know, we could survey people. It's a it's an opportunity for information gathering. That's one thing. And the other thing is um, a message of use the trails, clean up after yourself, yeah. and pitch in in some way. How do you survey? I love that. I love that. Um, um, you, were, you were saying, you know, pitch in. Yeah. What do you? Uh, how do you? How do you do a? How do you do an interactive survey on a? ECAT show that is videotaped? That's a good question. I'm, I'm sure there's a way to, to, it could, you know, it could, could be a like show of hands thing for participants. It could be a, in addition, it, an online survey to back up, back that up afterwards, like a survey monkey. Um, the because there were people who, who wanted to attend but couldn't. The ECAT, um, uh, yours was at, was yours at the Grange? Well, it was on Zoom. With with with, the, with Zoom with Grange members, how many people were, were part of the discussion? Uh, about twelve. Twelve. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay, so that's different from when I did it for the Ag Commission. It was me, an Ag Commissioner, and Priscilla. Um, if there's going to be, if this is going to be a Grange meeting, it could be then there, that would be the interactive stuff. I'm, I'm a little hesitant to say, what would you like? And we'll go do it because the message is where are we gonna come up with the funds and who's gonna do it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think the message should be, if you wanna get involved, you know, reach out and get involved, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that, that's one way for us to sort of get the information once they get involved. So, I mean, these sort of, you know, Project ideas. Yeah, so I mean, okay. I think so. I mean, you know, and I've I've had people reach out to me, and I always, you know, say, well, you know, we're doing trail work on Saturday. You know, if you want to come out, and I think one of them donated to the Flyaway Pond uh, um, um, right. fundraiser that Chris had going. So, right. um, you know, I, I think that those are the type of, of things. So, um, so since you're representing the the commission, I mean. May possibly even Mike along with you. I think we have to sort of authorize that for you, right? Do we? Do we? That's what this is all about. Yeah. Either, either you know, Chris or Mike to join me, so that there's more than one person speaking, right. but we're speaking for the commission. Right. So, um, so I, so I'll make a motion to authorize that. Is that, you know, now that we've given you direction. So uh, I make a motion to authorize Andrea along with uh, whatever commissioner she can get to join her, Mike, Chris, Mike and Chris, any combination thereof to uh, um, be our representative at this uh, Grange presentation. Lundin, second. Uh, Caulfell's aye. Lundin, aye. Right. Great. Thank you, Andrea. Okay. Appreciate, appreciate you doing that, Andrea. Yeah. Um, it's a, it is i can talk i just can't and that's what we need to do is get these to get these volunteers and you've really done a lot in the right. four years with volunteers right. so it's working um okay that's pretty much it 
Um, Big item. Do, do we need to talk about the, uh, the um, refiling? Should we talk about that? Oh, or no? oh, thank you. It wasn't on this list. Um, sawmill is now, sawmill subdivision is now called Old Forge. Um, it's the same subdivision. But um, because of Tom, of John leaving um, and Charlie having not been part of the project, they are, they've actually made a request to withdraw and resubmit in the very near future when their floodplain work is completed with their peer review and they can answer the outstanding questions. Um, in making that request, I actually recommend recommended that whether they refiled or they came in under the old filing, that first presentation after so long was gonna have to be a wrap up of everything that happened beforehand anyways, um, and all the decisions that were made um, and discussed. And then, so he, they decided to withdraw and um, refile to get more more votes, more more potential eligible commissioners. And um, the question for you is, would you consider waiving the application fee because they're withdrawing without prejudice and resubmitting in a short period of time? I suspect you could say within two months because they wanna be on the March, the May 24th meeting. Um, you know, we've done this in the past and, and I think that, um... I think that it probably benefits um, the commission to not, um, because we would be down to three members being able to vote. Um, and if one of us didn't make it, then we can't vote on it. So um, I think it makes sense to be able to include Charlie. And if we're able to get a fifth member by then, um, include that fifth member. So, um, so they've already withdrawn, so they're gonna refile. It's just whether or not we waive the filing fee. So. Um, I, I, we've, we've done this on a number of occasions. Um, waiving the filing fees in this case does not mean waiving peer review. They right. will pay for peer review. Right. So, so did, did I understand it in one of the emails I saw today that um, they understand there may be additional peer review fees? Yes. What happened with, uh, because of the way this, the application fee was upwards of, um, $11,000 when you included the ANRAD and the um, subdivision notice of intent. And so we anticipated we would pay for my my review, Tish's work and, and LEC's wetland review out of the application fees. But because the information kept coming in in dribs and drabs, LEC ended up using almost all of the application fee. So they we need them for the they they want lec there for the final review right and so they um will pay for lec's work okay so i, I i'm in favor of, of of waiving the filing fees um on the refile um i'm, I'm okay with that because they're, they're not going to substantially change the uh the project um so I, I i'm okay with that anybody else have comments i'm fine with it my i'm fine with it too Right, Andrea. Is it, what's the burden on you? Well, my um, my staff time is considered town hall overhead. My salary is not paid by application fees. My professional opinion was that when you have a large application fee, we shouldn't use the whole thing for consultants. We should use keep a piece of it to cover to cover the work we do. The burden on me, so forget about the the salary because the salary is covered under under the a different line item. Um, the burden on me is the same. I have always said that you can't just submit in two weeks because I've got to get this back from the very beginning. I have to remember everything I forgot. Um, and so the burden is the same, whether he comes in on the 24th with, with three eligible members or he comes in on the 24th with five eligible members, I suspect the 
uh, Two Hills presentation and my presentation would be pretty much the same. It would be, these were the issues, these are all the issues. This is, this is how the board was going on it. This is how they met the compliance. I'm gonna have the same level of effort one way or the other. Right, and so would it, would it be the same if, uh, if the, the sawmill was continuing as it had been rather than, you know, same. changing the name, the same? Same, for me, same. Okay. I'm not answering any new questions there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know. Yeah, I guess that sounds fine. Okay, so uh, I make a motion to uh, waive the filing fees um, on the um, refiling for um, 560 Foundry, formerly known as Sawmill. So a second. Uh, roll call vote, call falls aye. Lundy aye. Mingle aye. That's it for me. Right. What, what did you call it, Andrew? The Old Forge? That's the new name? Yeah. Funny as you got down on Washington Street on the left hand side across from the apartments was that strip plaza set down in the gully a little bit. And that used to be the old Forge uh, Tavern. That was old Forge at one time. They, they, they used that name. I guess they got I guess they got tired of everybody calling it, you know, it's the old foundry site. And sawmill the, is an actual place, right? It's a right. geographic location right. that's not on this site. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I guess Old Forge is better than Belcher Foundry. So, hey, I don't know if anybody's interested. It's totally off topic. But oh, I'm definitely not interested in off topic, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> we up like, we up like um, say, Pleasant Street, like you head up to, towards Hilliards and Easton. There's Stone House Hill Road, I think it is. Yeah. And you go up around the bend, right behind the bank. You go walk, not through the backyard, but you go up, there's a big, big, big hill back there, a huge hill. You walk up, you meander your way up the top, there's two rocks on the angle, another one laid over there that the Indians made years ago. Yeah, yeah. You walk up to the top of that, you can see Seaco City Hall in Brockton, and you dig around up there, you'll find tomahawk heads, arrowheads, it's pretty yeah, interesting. I, I've, I've heard that, yeah. yeah. My wife lived on the Brockton line there when she grew up, and she would tell stories about that, so. Um, anything else? I, I don't have anything. So, so just as a preparation, I, and I know the question has come up in the past, but you know, uh, Old Forge is targeting May twenty fourth as the, the time frame here. So, um, the floodplain boundary is under review by by our Wooded and Current peer re and engineering peer reviews. The information's been sent in. They've gotten a very extensive um, Conoco got a very extensive response. They are now, we said, in, when Widget and Curran doesn't have to give us any more reports, you guys just talk engineer to engineer and get it done. Um, and they think they're close. Yeah, just the one thing is, and, and I think that, that you mentioned it, um, is that they, they have to be sensitive to, they can't expect to, to give you the final information on Wednesday and be prepared to, to handle it on the 24th. I mean, that's just, yeah. You know, we, we've got, you know, this is the biggest project we've had in front of us in quite some time and um, and it's quite complicated and, and for you to um, have the time. And I, I know you already are starting your review because some of it, it has to be done anyway. So, um, but now that you, ha you have a timeline, we have a timeline, um, it'll behoove us all to get up to speed. And Charlie, you know, this will make you eligible to, to, to participate in this. So um, you can get back up to speed on this. Um, and what went on and um, this project here this is located right on washington street isn't it no no this is this is the property that's at the end of Quantico. Okay. okay 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 five five sixty foundry right next to the water treatment plant okay yep. um the good news for carol is that um there's been so many supplemental informations that are no longer valid that um Oh yeah, We're, streamline. We get down to the final plans. Um, no. Mike, <laughs> yeah, Mike Tuhill and I were speaking about <laughs> put picking up only the key documents. You know, what were the alternatives? How did this project awesome. start in the notice of intent process? What was the 
And then where is it today? And, you know, all those ridiculous things in the middle, it's going to be one waiver request, one wildlife habitat assessment, you know, one, one. That's worth waiving the filing fees right there, Carol. <laughs> it's going to be so much easier. Yeah, that one was, that one was a, a, a bit of a, a jigsaw puzzle, that's for sure. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've got a I've got a request into permitize. It's being upgraded, and uh, we have boxes on our end, and I've asked for those boxes to be included in your end as well, for public view as well. It makes it a lot easier. Great, great, Charlie. Your term ends at the end of June. Is that right? Pardon me. Is your term? Yeah, in, in June. Of June. In June. Yeah. Yeah, I think his seat is the only one that's up in June. I think. And I believe in the very near future, we're gonna have a new number. Right, yeah, I mean, yes. Maybe we get one before before Foundry, so. I think I think we probably will. So, um, so anything else from anybody? I, I, I don't have anything to add, so. Uh, we, uh, Rory, sing, sing to me. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, no, no. I, <laughs> I, had, I, had a, I had a piece of pizza before we started. That that was my dinner, so. I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> Thank um, you for, for coming. That, that's it. And so we will see everybody in two weeks on the 5th, um, or the 3rd of May. Sorry, Tish would have had, it, had my head and I said the 5th. Um, <laughs> the, the 3rd. Um, and uh, that's it. So motion to adjourn. May a second. Roll call vote. Call fells aye. Lundy night. Hello, aye. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. <laughs>